Welcome to 155, a POD about P-U-N-K songs. My name is Josiah Hughes, and with me, as always, is my dear friend and lover, Sam Sutherland. Sam, what are you doing? You know, just loving you, man, uh, as, as I want uh, and, and professionally um, and contractually obligated to do. I'm, I'm great, man. I'm doing, I'm doing great. My brain is clearing from that Vax flu fog that I had a week ago <laughs> in pod time, so... Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm experiencing the world with a clarity that that has, um, uh, uh, well, it turns out it, it has not missed me. A clarity that has avoided me. Yeah, okay, it turns out I'm still kind of a little fucked in the brain. Well, but, you know, I, I feel good. I feel good. Our thing is transparent honesty, and I think, honestly, if I'm being transparent, we have developed the level where we could probably fake it and pretend and let and say, oh, yes, it's very... Uh, it's giving third week of uh, offspring November vibes <laughs> right now. Uh, not oh, me. Yeah, we could fake it. Not so me good. in the latter half of November, uh, enjoying all of the uh, crisp snow underfoot as I wander around nearing December. Rent wow, payment. you're taking you're, you're taking a big swing there, assuming it's going to be snowing at well, the end of I, November. I right? have, well, it's because it is right now because that's what time it is. No, it isn't, folks. See, if you haven't realized from the quality of episodes, the last three episodes, we've recorded three in a row. Uh, we've literally <laughs> within a twenty four <laughs> hour is period, the most we have done we've three. Bashed. We've yeah. done three offspring episodes, and for some reason, we thought it'd be a good idea to do the most cursed. Uh, get a job song, and and I think this one's going to be quite a journey as well. I feel f- well, absolutely we did, fucked. We did. Uh, <laughs> I feel so fucked. Two in weeks the head. ago, uh, we did what I still think is a great song, "Bad Habit." I uh, I feel like we're see, I already forgot that we did that one, and that really that was horrifying. That was horrifying, that song. And no, then you were wrong about that. You know, and I had had a really busy day at work when we did that, which was literally yesterday. And so I had worked right through, and then I researched it, and then we did it right away. Like, I got all my covers. We did it right away. And then I think there was about a 40-minute window mm-hmm. to eat dinner when I hadn't found covers yet. So I did all the get-a-job covers. Uh, my brain was completely fucked. I slept about three hours last night. Um, One yeah, of my favorite cover selections. I told you, I told you after that. You did, yeah, it's true. Um, so but it really, I it, like it really threw you off there. If, I mean, normally, if, I feel like you just let me talk over you, and it's fine. But it was a long pause. Like, I'm just, ahead. I'm lost. I don't even know what I'm trying to say, except that <laughs> I think <laughs> you slept for three hours. I heard that. Yeah, I think I've slept less than I've talked about the offspring into my uh, Blue Yeti microphone in the last 24 hour period. So that's really interesting. That's interesting. I mean, you uh, definitely have. Yeah. You've talked about the offspring like three times as much as you've slept. <laughs> it's true. Well, not yet. I mean, there's, some, there's, still, there's still more talking about the offspring that needs to be done today. I still feel mm, like I don't no really sleeping. know them. No sleeping. I, it, it, it is helping to make it so we, compressed. We don't even really know Noodles' name. I remember I dreamt about the offspring punk news segment uh, last week, yesterday. So that's fucking me up. And then... You know, I've, I, the fact – maybe it's good, though, because I'm thinking more and more about how unknowable the offspring is the more you look at them and how – I'm starting to think that they're hiding something. And I don't want to, like, you know, point – I don't want to build a conspiracy oh. against the, the offspring. A conspiracy of one, I think, might even be one of the albums. But, I, you know, they, it does seem like it's such a tight-knit this is, this operation. Right, so it's a conspiracy of two. That's true. <laughs> it's such a tight-knit operation, and there's no, they're not, like, giving us any of themselves. What are they hiding? I mean, I think we both know exactly what it is. It's this. Um, so I... Oh, I, yep. G-chat here. Add it again. <laughs> add it again. So it's so... Uh, and, you know, they're, try, they're trying to come for us these days. Uh, and so if somebody does want to pay for the G-chat cheer, you will be able to finally destroy us, uh, I think, is absolutely the case. Until then, yeah, if it wasn't true before, I think the offspring has really uh, borne out that it's it's the most cancelable tier of the pod. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, you know, some sort of segue could go here, perhaps, as we enter the punk news segment. Punk news, punk news. 
forget everything I just said. We are obviously recording this episode on, let me just consult the calendar. It's We're probably recording right now on either November 21st or 22nd of 2022, which is why this segment, Punk News, will bring you the most <laughs> up-to-date punk news uh, from the current happenings in the world of punk. Uh, of course, the Punk News segment is an excuse for us to talk about what's happening, what's going on out there. We're trying to help out the scene. It's kind of a bulletin board uh, for the scene. And if anyone wants to put a... Uh, a, a, a loose leaf paper with rips on the bottom and a phone number to start a shitty band. Maybe we should do that in here. But this is punk news. Sam, do you have some punk news for us on the day, uh, Monday, November 21st, uh, after dinner when we're recording this right now? Yeah, I mean, how was your dinner? Mine was great. I, uh, what would be funny to have? I had... Ha- eaten uh, on November 22nd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's November 22nd's funniest food? <laughs> well, I th- so you're thinking we're recording on Tuesday is your bit that you're doing. I was yeah, thinking- I feel like we couldn't record on Monday. I was yeah, busy. Yeah, probably true. I mean, do you have some events planned for no- – I think I'm getting winter tires put <sighs> I on. I got a lot of November events. November 21st, yeah. I actually did just get my winter tires put on. Uh, so that's my big Wow, you put on winter tires, today. eh? It's, you, you have to by law in Quebec. So yeah. Oh wow, damn! You got a lot of lot of fucked up laws there, I know. and that's like, the most fucked up. Socialism one. does not work, folks. Uh, and you heard it here first. Parody, irony, joking, not irony. This is not an <laughs> irony show. This is not an <laughs> irony have to show. Put a lot of yeah. No, we're always being sincere in everything we say, and I could sincerely say. Can um, I just quickly bring though, up a tweet that I made a few weeks ago that didn't really go anywhere because I I kind of <laughs> yeah, oh, I didn't believe sure. in it that much, so I kind of coached it. Is your in, punk news about your tweet? My punk news is no, but it's good. My punk news is really good. Just so you know, just so you're aware, it okay. is. But okay, I was well, just I'm, thinking I'm the other day. What if? What if? Um, what would Alanis Morissette think is an irony, bro? And is there someone out there who is like an irony oh. bro by Alanis Morissette's definition? Like they're always like you going know, to the I, wrong wedding or whatever happens tweet. in that song. Yeah, I saw that tweet and I thought it. I don't think I liked it. I, I thought. Did I you think see about what he's it? Going for here? Did you I th- thought about liking it, and I ultimately decided. No, to regardless it. But of I if you liked it or not, did you about. go? Did you go on the thought? It was more. It, I even said, I "Don't did, riff yes. on this." I said, "Think about it. Just be, go on this thought journey with me." And I think it's so. I did. I did. Journey. I did as instructed. Yeah. And what did you think? Did you come up with a guy who could be an Alanis Morissette irony, bro? Well, I did, and his name is Bob Healy, and he was written about on NJ.com, <laughs> True Jersey in the Opinion Pages. Now, there's no, uh, th- this has been written by the Star Ledger editorial board, no brave journalist stepping up to attach, affix yeah, the byline to this. Even the photo, now, which is undated and was provided by Teresa Fermato <laughs> Velarde. So this, this man is a mis- this man is as mysterious and sinister as the offspring. An undated photo. Yeah, it's definitely, it's it's giving offspring. Uh, now, you and I both know that we are recording this following uh, the midterm elections in America, which made news around right. the world for being, uh, I'm going to go Caruso ahead and won, say. I think. I've yeah, Rick him. Caruso won as he should. And uh, I'm sure, you know, the right side, uh, the, the, the right the good side. guys. Yeah, the right side. The right side. The right side Parody. probably did win. Uh, we're um, doing it. Alanis Morissette irony right now. So just calm. Everyone calm down. Now, NJ.com is asking, uh, will this, and, and I guess by now you, you might know the answer, but uh, I don't pay attention to the news. Will this ex-punk rocker turned yacht dealer buy his way into Congress? <laughs> and this is, of course, an editorial. I'm interested in this composite character. You're allowed to do that? Become a yacht, an ex-punk rocker turned yacht dealer? That's so sick. Well, Let's learn some more from the Star Ledger's editorial turned out board. A Republican ch- yacht. <laughs> Tur- turned out a yacht. <laughs> Republican challenger Bob Healy is gaining ground in New Jersey's third district, election forecasters say, and that's alarming. He has zero public experience and is cutting to the front of the line based on family money and the power of TV commercials. Let's Healy go. is wildly unqualified. He spent eight years as the lead singer for a punk rock band and is now a yacht dealer and yoga teacher. Oh my God. He's never held he has any it all. public office. He's the <laughs> coolest guy. Also, yoga teacher, that's balance right there. Dealing yachts and I don't know. I can't. I don't Dealing really know much thoughts. about it. <laughs> I don't know. I stretching it's... your bod, bods. Stretching uh, quads. There we go. Um, doing squats. Do, dealing yachts and doing squats. Oh. There we go. Do you do squats and yoga? Hell yes. I don't really know. 
I don't know. I don't think so. He's never held any public office that demonstrates no fluency on the key issues of the day. This is definitely an editorial. I mean, come on. He is a contender only because his mother put up $2.7 million uh, into a super PAC to prop up his campaign. He I mean, sounds like he my parents are it. wonderful and supportive. My mom has never put $2.7 million yeah. into a super PAC to support my campaign. None of our parents are uh, even on the New Patreon. Jersey they don't even give us $5 a month. You know, my parents were, like, pretty, I think because, like, YouTube was more accessible, were, like, aware of and, and like, sort of invested hate, your parents in hate what my was guts. going on. Your parents hate me. With the YouTube channel, but they hate you so much. <laughs> um, like, if, if the pod ever comes up, like, my sister will bring it up or something at dinner. I'm like, we should just not. I don't, I don't really want to. Because yeah. I'm so, one time I was like, I'll listen to it. And I was like, please don't. Because like, definitely Because I don't want you to know that this my is parents what know the precious like, gift of life that you gave me. I, my parents know not to listen. But they, they're interested in the lore, for sure. Uh, mm, but, I mean, that's fair. I mean, like, your dad is sort of a professional lorist. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Uh, so, so, you know, it goes on and they just keep, keep rudely bodying Bob Healy here. Unfortunately, uh, people they don't, love to body him. It's so rude. Uh, they, but they don't, they don't seemingly, they don't mention the name of his band. So I'm, I'm going to maybe try to Google that while you talk about your punk music. I'm actually Googling uh, it you know, right now. I'm trying to figure okay, it out. So, so he's a bit of a, you know, he's one of these conservative punks that we occasionally hear about. Um, Healy is called for tax cuts on yacht sales. So, I mean, obviously we know uh, his <laughs> number so one issue. Sick. Merits aside, so the he editorial board so of the Star Ledger cool. is agreeing that there's merit to cutting the taxes on yacht sales. Pushing a specific policy like that would directly benefit his own yacht business. It shows a lack of awareness of fundamental ethics rules. He's also praised, praised Trump's 2017 tax overhaul that gave a huge windfall to corporations and the rich, including Healy and his family. So, I mean, classic punk, he's rich as fuck, his parents are paying for everything, you know, got a yacht. I feel like there's probably a, a lot of quiet yachts in 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 the scene you know so uh wait i feel like he was using a Did maybe a fake stage name I, i'm trying to figure oh, out if it's the same guy a, a punk because name i think so but I, i'm pretty sure he's from the band the ghouls is this in is he in philadelphia or is he from philadelphia it says he's he's running in new jersey but like philly's there yeah, um, oh, hold know. on. There's a Reddit thread about him. I wonder if they, they list his name here. Bob Healy. Yeah, this is in the R Punk. Uh, just real quick, so. though, back to the original article. Like, before you read any further, just look at his picture and tell me what age you think he is. Because I feel like. Oh, my God. It's not what you think, probably. I think he is. Uh, I'm going to go with, like, he's mm, 37. Oh, okay. Well, actually, that was really good. He's 38. But he, I feel oh, like when you're go. that clean cut and Republican, you look a lot older. Uh, like, he, to me, if someone had said he's 49, I would have believed them. But maybe I'm just mm, out of touch mm, with kind of I think it suits more, I think, than you. Right, yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, there's even in this... Okay, yeah, it's, it's definitely Bob from the Ghouls. That's, that's Ghoulie Bob. Oh, my God. There's some kind of punk-themed ad that they did. Is that, is that what you've just sent me? Yes. Holy shit. Uh, no, I, I sent you. I sent you the 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 uh, R Punk conversation about it. Oh, um, I've clicked on something. Oh yeah, no, the the R Punk thing. You just clicked this video. Mad. No, there is a video. It's this. Uh, it's the Biden Pelosi experience. Washington is a madhouse. Far left records. I don't know why it's not unmuting in Watch Together. We, we can kind of see it. Soul crushing grocery bills. What? Are you hearing anything? Oh, here we go. Politicians no, dancing no, along no, no, no. to an insane tune. I got giving it. Giving a skyrocket in gas prices, soul-crushing grocery bills, and making it harder to get by. You definitely Bob use Healy. the... Uh... Well, my mosh pit days may be behind me. I still know how to throw an elbow and get things done. <laughs> oh like cutting spending to fight inflation. He said, well, my mosh pit days are behind me. I still know how to throw prices. an elbow to Standing get the job done. Standing with cops and cracking down on crime. Yes. Enough of this uh, madness. So it it needs, we need this uh, Philly music... Uh, fandom wiki that you sent me, which I look like, again, there's some editorializing going on here. The Ghouls were a horror punk band from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, active between 2004 and 2008. Following the departure of founder Robert Price, the remaining members, which I guess is him, uh, the remaining members formed Hate and War. They were total snobs and bitches. Uh, so it looks like the, the Philly music fandom wiki uh, kind of oh letting us God. know. Um, 
so maybe so wow. maybe this is them playing at the first Unitarian Church in Philadelphia, PA. Here's another one. Wow, so he's like straight up like a fucking Uber that's now a yacht dealer. <laughs> wow. Is this the same? Am I correct? I'm like a, I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. Like, you look at that logo. It's, a, it's an oogly logo. The ghouls perform Hostile City with Shane West. Like, they're the kind of sick. The actor who played Darby Crash? Yeah, that's so sick to, like, be a... Like a yeah, they were a street punk slash horror. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's what they fucking looked like. That's actually incredibly to sick. To go from that to become a yogi yacht dealer who's running in for a uh, Republican Party, that's incredible. Like, we we got to officially endorse him from the pod, I think. Yeah, Absolutely. you know what? It's a little belated because he's already won or lost. Um, I think which, he won. Again, I think we're going to call it right now that he won. won. All the all the and I got my are... winter tires on without any snags, despite the language barrier and having to drive to Laval oh, in great. the snow. I think it's been a great day so far, November twenty first. Uh, according to that mag, the Ghouls were some of the most legendary punks in the Philadelphia punk scene. There you go. So, um, pretty okay, good. pretty well, good. Well, mine is a, a special blast from the past because not because uh, it's not the day of recording, but because I just wanted to do a blast from the past, uh, which is just from May of earlier this year. That's because Rachel, the hair editor, pointed out that this was on the telly, uh, which is what they call the boob tube mm. over in uh, Britain. Uh, mm. This was on the telly earlier this year, and it's back. It's an ad for Mr. Kipling, uh, some sort of cakes. What are they called? They're called sli- uh, angel slices. Now... Just check out this ad. It's basically an old guy. It's like a grandpa and a granddaughter uh, visiting of maybe the holiday. It's not really clear what the narrative is, but just look at this old guy remembering the piano with this young gal. She gets her Kipling's angel slices. There's moving boxes. They just for some reason start playing all the small things. He looks very Santa Claus ish. <laughs> Mr. Kipling, yeah. exceedingly Aww. good cake. So, Mr. Kipling, exceedingly good cake. They play Blink 182, all the small things for some reason. I thought this, in addition to this ad, we could sort of do another ad and mention uh, Blink 155 Our is back on Patreon. Patreon.com slash 155 pod. New episodes back of Blink 155. Ever. They're so good. So powerful. They're not making everyone mad every week. They're such good episodes <laughs> that rock. Um, so this ad... Both people, those things could be true, though. People are... People... You think it's true that we could do something that doesn't make everyone mad? That's interesting. No, I'm um, saying they, could, they can be really good and they can make people mad. Like yeah, maybe, we're provocateurs. You know, it's not an either or... Provocateur. You know, proposition. So the grocer.co.uk... Uh, Mark Dishman wrote earlier this year, Mr. Kipling's new ad allows, or should that be forces, its audience to fill in the gaps in its stories. Now, uh, I did open this when Rachel first sent it to me, and so now I'm paywalled, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but let's see. Well, I can read it. Uh, we begin with a beardy old fella gazing at an old picture of himself at a girl we assume is his daughter sitting by a piano. He puts it aside and sadly presses a few keys of the instrument he's sitting beside. The room is full of labeled boxes. His now grown-up daughter comes over with tea and Mr. Kipling slices and joins him for a duet, turning the atmosphere jolly with a rendition of All the Small Things by Blink-182. It's a sweet moment, but is he moving in or out? Off to a home, maybe? Or is she moving? Is late 1990s poplin nostalgia fodder now? Are these Mr. K's new non-HFSS cakes? We need answers. Some of that I don't understand. We don't need answers, I think, is one thing that we all generally need to realize is that we just actually, a lot of life is unknowable, and I think we should stop playing Mm. God and try to understand what's going on. However, I do think it's interesting that people just are confused by this admittedly very confusing commercial that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, But it got me thinking, what do you think the narrative of this is, first of all? I think that maybe British people associate all the small things with being incredibly sappy because they probably don't remember the all the small things TV show, but they might remember like it might have seeped into their subconscious when they were in the hospital once 10 years ago or something. Doesn't that seem like it would play in a hospital? It does feel like it's, yeah, it's British hospital music. (laughs) Um, No, look, I I feel like the link that you sent me has, I saw it and now I, now I, um, 
now I interpret it this way, is the idea that this is a poignant father-daughter moment reliving a favorite teenage song. So this is them connecting over her youth, you know, as she becomes an adult. But doesn't she seem too off. young to like this song? That's the other thing that's confusing about Blink-182. TikTok, man. Uh, TikTok. That's true. Okay, well, I did really... Also, you, you're, you're bad at guessing people's ages. <laughs> that's also true. Uh, that's because I only see myself, and I still think that I'm a young buck, despite what they say. I just thought real quick we should, you know, in order to make, in order to negate the ad space for Mr. Kipling Cake's Angel Slices, I did want to sort of hear from the other side. So this is a review from the United States on Amazon.com, uh, written by Ask at NW Clips, which probably is some kind of, this must be an insane person writing this, because they've written, in title case, the headline is, these go way beyond bad and verge on evil, three exclamation marks. The glowing reviews of these cakes, in the loosest possible sense of the definition of cake, caused me to buy them, along with an order of robust English tea, which in the event fully lived up to its definition of robust tea. They looked a bit dodgy to me, even as I looked at them in their individual plastic containers, but trusting to the five-star reviews, I dove in. These things are utterly horrible. They are just mushy, mealy, sugar gut bombs that are so unpalatable that I thought I had eaten four of them and found the next day I had three remaining. After the first two, I thought that I should give them a fair shot at changing my initial revulsion, so I went back and ate, as I thought were were two more, to confirm my worst fears. These are frightfully bad, so bad in fact, that I had to read the contents just out of morbid curiosity. Sure enough, apart from wheat, proportionately the third most ingredient in the mix, these are nothing but sugar and fat. Number one, sugar. Number two, vegetable oils, fat. Number four, glucose syrup, sugar. Number five, vegetable glycerin, fat. Number six, vegetable fats, fat. Number seven, dextrose sugar. I mean, this person goes on. There's no flavor to speak of other than cloying sweet sugar burn. And as I said, the texture is mushy and mealing. Mealy, I'm not a food snob. I eat fast food often. In fact, I went to not one, not two, but three fast food joints today for coffee, drinks, and a fried fish sandwich. What the fuck? (laughs) I bought a lot of these as giveaways to customers because I thought they'd be a novel treat, but I got to say, I'm going to apologize as I leave them. I have to imagine that we can make things that are every bit as loathsome right here in the USA. I find that my guys like the cakes from Sarah Lee. I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? You're giving them away my as guys. gifts? My guys. <laughs> maybe your taste buds are all fucked up because you've been driving around drinking soda and coffee and fried fish. That, uh, I presume that's the only thing that person had eaten that day. Was yeah, these, these, this is what's really fucking up your gut. And also, like, I hated two, I hated the first two cakes, so I thought I would eat the rest of the box to see how it's it was. It's basically like the Yoda meme, like, you know, 3 a.m. going back <laughs> Yeah, exactly it's insane uh so that's i guess you know that was a sort of a blast from the past specifically may of 2022 uh, and that was punk news you're gonna go far kid it's kind of a cool kid. thing to say i just realized that kid, I said you're it. gonna go far i've noticed that the offspring is like definitely one of the most uh, fedorable bands we've ever covered on the show. And this is this song title is like pure fedora vibes, 100%. It, it, it's, it is like outrageous. Like I, this is one of those things where I, I kind of didn't know if like we had picked a song that was so not punk, like that it was just like because it's by The Offspring – is that is that enough? Like, and I really don't know that it is, but it is sort of like sort of punk. It, there's a I, there's I, a bit of a oompa in here, I think, at some point. It, it 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 definitely has like to me kind of shades of like, you know, the kids aren't all right is in there, but it's so like a band desperate to like find a way to be relevant as a rock band and also realizing it was produced by Bob rock is incredibly obvious because it sits in this world of like the shit that he does that, you know, we've talked about this a lot in relation to, I guess the offspring all like, like months ago. When this we one, this. you know, when we were doing Fugazi for two months, it was a lot. I'm maybe it's cause it's all been in a 24 hour span, an entire month of content, but uh, it's, this one's starting to hurt the brain a little bit. Is it not? <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling like super good uh, at this point, <laughs> brain wise, uh, because like 
this to me has like a, a really cool, like I really like the pre-chorus melody and I really like the There's a cool like melody. shimmery guitar in the pre-chorus, I think. If I, yeah, it's, I, it's, I, I, it's vaguely like, it's like the cult or something. Like it's kind of, kind of neat. And then this like, to me, like chorus that I like about the, like, I think there is something to, you know, Brian Holland's songwriting where like you, you really do feel like you're listening to an offspring song. And I mean that like as a compliment, like this chorus feels like it, 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 it of of a piece with like the the choruses that I like on Ixney on the Elm brand, like what's good on Smash. But this verse, which is like how the song opens and like truly how they frame it, is one of those things where you're like, what are you trying to sound like? Like who is the point of reference at the start of this song? Like why does this song sound like this? And I feel like the only answer is like it's Bob Rock. It's like the most Bob Rock like you know, it, it sh- this is the sort of thing that he probably tried to make Metallica fucking do. Like, so Bob Rock is like, let's explain who Bob Rock is. Cause a lot of people who listen might not be up on uh Grammy winning Winnipeg based music uh, producers. But okay, of course he please, is. First of all, first of all, I mean, he's based Winnipeg in, born bred he's based in high uh, in Hawaii. That's like his whole thing. That's true. And I could, I see that you've clicked through to his Wikipedia. I mean, he was born in Winnipeg, but Vancouver <laughs> Truly where Bob Rock, you know, uh, uh, found himself because he worked at Royal Mountain, not Royal Mountain, Little Mountain Sound. Okay, so I look at the Wikipedia. Royal Mountain. <laughs> he looked at Royal Mountain, like uh, just putting out pup records. Uh, and so, I mean, first of all, he was in the Payolas, which like Eyes of a Stranger, I think I think people know. But then when he, uh, he was like kind of an assistant or whatever at this recording studio where like huge bands would go and record and he would record like punk bands and shit there. Like, so he was like very much kind of part of the early, um, like he recorded the modernettes there. Uh, he never recorded DOA, but they ended up doing an album together, like, you know, 10 years ago. Cause it was like, Oh, we missed each other at the time. But like Bob Rock was like a key part of, Oh, he recorded the a lost Vancouver profits punk album and hardcore too. Scene. Just when we're talking about yeah. punk bands he's worked with. I just noticed that one. Some, so just, some, just some of the great punks. That, well, I don't think they're great. I personally don't think they're great, but it's you said that right now, so that's... Well, yeah, but okay, like, Young Canadian, Subhumans, Pointed Sticks, like, cool shit, and then, like, becomes slowly, like, he does the cult, and then it's, like, Molly Crew is, like, his breakout, and then he sort of becomes famous, because he, like, he, so his real thing is, like, doing the Black Album, and then... If you've seen some kind of monster, he's the one who's he's like trying guy. so hard to be the bass player. In so the I have some questions. First of all, do you like the cult? Because you compared it to the cult, and I feel like every time I've heard the cult, it's sounded disgusting and horrible to me, and made me want to die. But do I, you I like would them? say I have not spent enough time with the cult to have it a true. It seems like it's a band opinion. that like Gen X likes to reference. Yeah, I in feel their like worst like... songs. The songs that sound bad to millennials are some Gen X bands trying to reference the cult. Usually. Is that fair? Yeah. I think that's probably a fair, a fair statement. And secondly, Um, when you mentioned Bob Rock, I feel like I hear this intonation in your voice that you, because remembering him in some kind of monster, I kind of think he's adorable, but it sounds like you don't love him. You you think that he is some kind of monster, perhaps. I think he's the monster, you know, in that, in that film. No, I just think like, I mean, look, if you look through, I mean, he, he ruined, he, you know, like I don't I don't want to act like a guy who has like really really strong Metallica opinions but like the black album is like bad and it is where it all goes wrong and then like this everything that he does like I I do not like Motley Crue but I think there's like an argument to be made that like Shout of the Devil's kind of you know there's a time and a place for it but then you get into like the truly like I don't think we have to redeem like every band and so I'm just thinking like I look through like not Poptimism doesn't have to reach the bad Metallica records. Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, all, like Load, Reload, Brian Adams, Tall Bachman, The Moffats, Econoline Crush. Actually, that's good. But then, oh, like, he's the dude that people go to when they're trying to cross over. So he's doing all these huge American bands, right. and then like. He's doing like late era Our Lady Peace and T like Our Lady Peace and Tea Party records I have never fucking heard of. All the tragically hip albums when they were like trying so hard to cross over and be famous in the States. Like if selling out is a concept that that still exists in the world, like Bob Rock That's is who him. you go to okay. to try to sell out. Fair, fair. He's like the Tom Lord ALG 
of well, uh, Tom Lord Algy is like a game. sick Hobbit. He's like a cool ass Hobbit who does yeah. does no wrong. And I think there's another Lord Algy growing out there too. Uh, the Algies. Is this? I'm just gonna do a quick command F. Is this the first time that he's worked with the Offspring on this album? It is. So whatever this album is, I think I remember seeing this when it came out and thinking that it it does have real nasty uh, battle of the bands. I mean, I think I, I'm trying to I'm trying to find ways to describe this aesthetic without being rude. It, it's scary looking. Uh, the album cover. It looks like someone it would be on someone's pickup truck that you would not want to cut off because they might kill you kind of vibe um it's like it's like the it it looks like what people who don't understand juggalos think juggalos are like like that kind of level of scary oh, that's absolutely yeah it just feels like this is you know the, the other aspects of like the offspring's aesthetic have sort of come back into favor, like the, all the flames and, and, and yeah. stuff. Like they're all things that, as you described, they look very like mile end coffee shop. And, and this is like, I feel like where we get into like irredeemable aesthetic territory, like <laughs> in terms of like the literal visual aesthetics, but also how this song feels and sounds where it just feels like this is like monster energy drink, Fox racing, like, this does not feel like music. For, this feels like music for people who like don't like to go to the city. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And like they have really strong opinions about it, you know, where you're like, what? <laughs> like that's it's not just like it's, fine. it's like oh, it's busy and I don't like driving it. Like that's totally reasonable. It's unpleasant to drive like downtown in a big city. Yeah, like, yeah that's, of course. That's, that's that's defensible. But like people who have opinions about the city, like if I picture a, a, a Canadian who's like it, into this vibe, I picture someone who has like non-ironic opinions about Toronto. You know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like real opinions about Montreal. Like they, and they probably think that the only thing that Montreal has done right is like all the racist stuff. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Uh, it's very scary. It's, this is just, this is scary folks. This is a scary aesthetic to be playing with. I mean, everyone go look at the album cover for rise and fall, comma rage and grace. I just think it's funny to, you know, you're describing Bob rock trying to help them write a hit that this is their first album in five years in 2008 and then it's like someone at Columbia let them release this album cover. Like I can guarantee I know, the album outrageous. cover is the problem. Cause if you look at the album before the offspring splinter, that looks more, I mean, it looks like shit, but it looks more, it looks like shit, but it looks of the era shitty. You yeah. Know? It, it looks it, like it a looks major design at least. Album. Yeah. Exactly. And the one after it does too. The one after it is called like, um, is uh, days go by like this and one looks like it's like, someone has stole a decal machine for honda civics <laughs> and, and they run a shitty boot like decal company in their backyard well it's basically like i feel like this is like the drill meme where instead of all your money going to candles all of your money has gone to recording in hawaii with bob rock and so you ended up like because literally, it's, I mean, they recorded this in, in Hawaii, and then you're like, oh, shit, we have no money for the album cover. Uh, uh, does your cousin's, <laughs> does he still own the Deckel company? Does yeah, he still, this is... Does he still make those, like, monster racing, or monster racing, It's like they know, did uh, a... Parody uh, decals? Oh, what's it called? I, I don't even think I can... What's the fake Photoshop called that's free online? I think it's literally called... I'm gonna make sure I know that it's called this before I. There used to be the one I think into it? called GIMP actually. Uh, oh, I remember GIMP. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've definitely used. No, yeah, GIMP it's still a lot. here. New image. This looks like a, it's like a, a recovery program where they're teaching people graphic design, but they only use GIMP uh, to do it. <laughs> yeah, it was not really like, like giving them any usable skills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Moving forward, unfortunately, <laughs> like they think that to to move the layers around, you have to click out a bunch of ads and like turn your ad blocker off and on again <laughs> in order to make it. <laughs> that's work. yeah, that's a key a key part <laughs> of the process. It's funny, like because this you're right. This is such a scary aesthetic, and you know we have covered bands that have tried to be scary. And they're not like judge is not half as scary aesthetically <laughs> as the offspring 2008 major label album, rise and fall patience and grace rise and fall rage and grace. What is uh, this? Oh my God. And, and so I think the thing that's the most disgusting though, in the song is like that it has a kind of, I don't know if you mentioned this or not. It has a kind of dance beat to oh, it as well. Yeah. Like, what is that? 
I, that's, and that's the part that baffles me. So like, you know, I, I remember, so we were like, we should do a, a, another, another song from like an era that we haven't covered. And we were both shocked to be like, oh, this is a hit because 2008, like neither of us are listening to the radio or like deep in, like there's just no way we would have been exposed to the song. But I do remember at some point, like a decade ago, being in a zip car or something and generally like at that point still probably avoiding listening to the edge, but, but having the edge or maybe they probably played this on fucking Indy 88 hearing this song and being like, not, not paying attention to it. And then once the chorus came in, I was like, Oh, is this like a new offspring song that I like? And I remember at some point it came back into my head like years ago. I was like, fuck that. That offspring song was pretty, I want to listen. I wonder if I like that song and going through like the singles from their last few records and not being able to find it because I would start this song and be like, well, it can't be this. Maybe it's that song <laughs> Hammerhead. It's another single from this era. And then finally somehow being like, I'm just going to put on this terrible offspring record and just see how it feels. And it felt fucking bad. But like when this, I was like, oh, it's this song. Because I think maybe, maybe what they're trying to do is sound like Fall Out Boy. It's, like, that's, that's the closest... I think I can think of that would have been like, like I wonder what Fall Out Boy was doing in, in 2008. This because this seems does like have a, like, fall, it has a Fall Out Boy scene. song title too. The song title yeah. is very Fall Out Boy. You're going to go far, kid. It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah, because you know what? That's exactly what it is because this is Infinity on High uh, comes out in 2007 and that has This Ain't a Scene, It's an Arm Race. Thanks for the mummers. Uh, and so for sure... They're like, okay, well, we got to find a way. Like, if that's the way that guitar music is going, so right. this is just like straight up. Because well, on the pre-chorus, they sing to... "Dance, fucker, dance," which seems also like it's kind of getting on that uh, fueled by ramen kind of shit as well. But is it okay? So what's the pre-chorus? Because there's that like, dance, fucker, dance, man. He never had a chance. Something like that, I think. I don't know, man. This is so. What's the like? But also, the problem is, I kind of when I was hearing it too earlier, I was like, "Oh, this chorus is kind of good." (laughs) It's a really good chorus. Let's take a look at the lyrics and and sort of think about how the song makes us feel. Um, So, show me how to lie. You're getting bitter all the time. Yeah, it's just like Panic in the Disco, Fall Out Boy, but like through the you know ashtray lenses, like just (laughs) two stained (laughs) ashtrays that fix your eyes of the offspring. uh, and uh, so show me how to lie. You're getting better all the time and turning all against the one is an art that's hard to teach. Another clever word sets off an unsuspecting herd as you step back into line and mob jumps to their feet. This is like now, music that this is making me think of someone who is uh, about to go into divorce court and they're in the bathroom checking to make sure that their uh, Volcom dress but button up shirt looks good with their black jeans and they're kind of wetting their hair to pat it down to make it look like it's been mm. done. It's kind of just the general vibe I'm getting. It also like feels like, you know, they're talking about mob. It's someone they reference like, you know, people behaving like a flock of sheep in the genius annotations. This feels like a song from the perspective of someone who says sheeple really seriously. <laughs> um, uh, now dance, fucker dance, man, he never had a chance. And no one even knew it was really only you. And now you steal away. Take him out today. Nice work you did. You're going to go far, kid. I mean, if this is so... I, I like... This is apparently Dance Fucker <sighs> Dance, according to an annotation, says, In the book Lord of the Flies, the savages dance around the fire after killing a pig or an enemy human. So sorry for the spoiler, folks. This theme comes back in their more recent song, Slim Pickens Does the Right Thing and Rides the Bomb to Hell, in which the expression Dance Fucker Dance clearly refers to dancing around a fire literally or figuratively. Ah, uh, well, the world is going to end, so dance around the fire that we once believed in, I guess. So they don't say dance, fuck, or dance again, but um, they do have another song called Slim Pickings. And, and I, Good Lord, man. I get, everyone sees this, like all of the annotations are about Lord of the Flies, because uh, I guess in the outro he sings, Clever alibis, Lord of the Flies. Hit him right between the eyes, hit him right between the eyes. I mean... I feel like referencing Lord of the Flies. Like, what grade were you in when you read Lord of the Flies? I never read it, like, as a way to, I have, I've actually never read it. Did you go to school? I did, but, I, you know, I used to use Spark Notes a lot, but I don't think we even studied that one. I think I somehow missed it. I think I might have been one grade too late because I lived in Scotland. It's all, it's confusing. I moved to Canada halfway through school, so I missed some crucial information, I think, 
Uh, mm, like how okay, to that's, so they don't make you read like how to Canadian do something school. with your life basically uh, <laughs> yeah the class miss, I missed. miss miss that class <laughs> uh, so so you know this this does say like um, you know these lyrics meant this is I'm on I'm flip, flipping over to song facts right now because I mean I can't I actually can't keep reading those fucking lyrics <laughs> um, but on song facts you know they mention. Uh, the, the lyrics the lyrics discuss Lord of the Flies William Golding's 1954 novel but a group of British school was like yeah everyone knows everyone knows what Lord of the Flies is and then it's like in ev- like, this is a hmm the song reminds me of Lord like it, it feels also like an opportunity for everyone to be uh, like so so smart and be like I have also read the book like that's one of the only books anyone's ever read yeah except for me so I think that's kind of cool that I'm different I'm just built different <laughs> But but look, I mean, in addition to being uh, about Lord of the Flies, the song is also, and, and for some reason he constantly references the kid. People must have thought this. The kid in the song is not the guy from Pretty Fly for a white guy, because maybe that's a thing. People were like, oh, it's a song about him. Um, so Offspring from Dexter Holland explained the meaning behind this punk song rager in an interview with the Argentinas, with the Argentinas, uh, that's what it was written, uh, Pagina 12. The guy from Pretty Fly was hooked on the latest fashion culture, and the guy from You're Gonna Go Far Kid is busy manipulating other people. You can take him as a high school kid who tries to form his own social group, but on the way he manipulates other with a behavior disorder that will never leave him. You might see that guy later as a United States deputy or Ooh. running a corporation. Even if that boy has grown up, his idea of manipulating will always be with him. So that's like a borderline anti-cop, like a United States deputy. I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's like the closest thing to like an anti-cop punk sentiment that we'll ever get out of Dexter Holland. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I'm looking at song meanings real quick. Uh, and it's everyone's just being like, I think the song is about Lord of the Flies. So I think that's also what the- <laughs> this is good. Uh, also, that the title is a little sarcastic. For example, if you and me were playing football and you make a nice pass to me, I might say "nice pass, Peyton Manning," but I don't literally mean you are Peyton Manning. <laughs> 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 That's that could get kind of confusing. D Rock One Thousand on June nineteenth, two thousand eight said, "It sounds to me like this song is about a hitman or something like that." I don't know. I could be wrong though. That's just my opinion. I mean, D Rock is really insecure. Uh, Damn. Dragging his epic replied, "That's what I thought, like a mob hitman or something." That's what. So that was that reply <laughs> was six years later and was sent twice by accident. So that's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really, really great. I mean, I just like love the idea that, um, you know, like that's that to me speaks to like who the like target audience of that aesthetic is, is people who would hear this and be like, it's probably a song about a hit man. And that's kind of like me. I'm like, yes. I'm like the hit man. Saying it of, in that intonation too. Like that's exactly. Yeah. Oh my God. Did you watch the video for this also? I put it on and then it like honestly Dude, made me feel too gross. So and I just, so I just like let it play and it's I clicked so away. So grody. I let it play and I clicked away. Well, there is a that you 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 played it you played it away. Uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Exactly. Um. I, every time I like type, usually when we're talking about something, I'll type the artist's name into my tab and it'll show me the most recent things that I've opened so I can quickly jump to something. But because we've been talking about so many horrible verbose offspring song titles in the last 24 hours, like everything's completely fucked. My com- Anyways. Okay. Here we go. There is a nice uh, description of the music video on wiki that I thought we could check out, but this is, it was directed mm, yeah. by Chris Hopewell who's done videos for Radiohead, France Ferdinand, the killers, Oh, run the jewels! Even a little bit of a hip hop flavor, uh, but he, mm. like he's—it's clearly like all the other offspring videos are like terrible sub med TV sketches that suck, and then they just tried to get into like it kind of has like the modest mouse float on like post jib jab, almost serious, almost steampunk. But I think it's supposed to be like I feel like it has Cormac McCarthy the road vibes how it looks, but it also just everything looks oh. like it's covered in piss and it's disgusting and terrible. Um, here's the, here's what happens in the video. So no one has to watch it. The plot follows a peasant working in a garden in a dystopian future. Suddenly a nymph appears and gives the peasant a magical golden acoustic guitar and he begins strumming to the song. He enters town and plays for the locals. The magical abilities of the guitar make the peasant a sensation, earning him much needed money and causing various townsfolk to start dancing uncontrollably. The peasant then plays for plague, it pays, then plays for plague infested town, townspeople and they are cured by the magic of the guitar. In return, he demands from one of them her expensive necklace while 
while the nymph looks upon him disapprovingly, the peasant moves into a very expensive hotel but is denied entry based on his appearance. He plays more to earn money for a nice suit. He buys the suit, enters the restaurant, and begins to play his guitar for the wealthy socialites for more money. The nymph appears and punishes the peasant for his selfishness by first forcing him to dance alone to the music, then dragging him into the ground through a whirlpool. The guitar lands onto the floor and dissolves into leaves at the end of the song. So it's kind of like, I think... Homer's uh, Odyssey or Iliad or something. One of those. I think one that's of those what the, I've never I've never read Homer any any of Homer's many great works, but I imagine they're all about nymphs and guitars and um, what a stu- uh, so it's like this disgusting stanky disco song that then has like a shimmery pre-chorus and then a sort of almost pop punk sing along, and then they decided to do this like piss soaked nymph video. That has like it's nothing like any of the other ones, and I also always thought that it's kind of cheap to not put the band in your video. I think. yeah, put let me let me look at noodles. You know, just I like, want to see I want to see those nudes. I don't want to see him, but I'm just saying it's. I don't think of it. It's more of a fan cam. If it's like a, it's an anime mm. music video. If you're not putting them in there, then it's not a real music video in my books. Yeah, that's fair. And calling it like piss McCarthy is is extremely accurate. It's <laughs> it's it's really it's it's so unpleasant. Uh, sorry, I just found another song meanings that I want to share because I I do think this is like I think we really nailed the type of person because this is posted by the user Delta Force. I think it's about special forces and black operations operatives. For ex- like this feels like these feel like like Felix characters. Um, I think it's about special forces and black operations operatives. For example, when you walk away, nothing more to say could mean the operation was successful and no one could talk about it. A thousand lies in a good disguise could mean the undercover operation. Hit him right between the eyes, hit him right between the eyes could mean that the guy sniped a man with a headshot. (laughs) Turning all against one is an art that's hard to teach could mean black propaganda. Hmm. Well, Tech Casualty said, guys, the whole hitman and assassin ideas are way out of line. An assassin does not manipulate the masses. You're taking the word sight and right between the eyes too literal. So I guess it depends on how, how we think... Uh, an assassin sort of emotional state or their, um, you know, what drives them, really. Because I think an assassin might manipulate the masses depending on who they assassinate, you know? Damn, that's that's a hot assassination take. Uh, once again, we're rearing, like, the, the I've read two books um, <laughs> uh, takes here. This is from Chloe. Many people are relating it to the novel LOTF, using that uh, acronym, <laughs> but I really see no correlation. For my English class, however, we had to read a book and then choose a song that we thought reflected the book. I chose this song, and my book was A Clockwork Orange. So basically, my interpretation of the song was the main plot of the book. It's about a criminal manipulative kid who commits all these crimes and evil doings, quote-unquote, with lightning in his eyes, as he genuinely enjoyed it, as Alex does in Clockwork. Then he steps back in the line, and the mob jumps to their feet just as Alex gets mobbed after he returns from his arrest. But the book and the song point out the theme of growing up. For example, in the song the title, You're Gonna Go Far, Kid, I interpret it as a sarcastic remark as to the direction that the boy is headed, just as Alex realizes at the end of the novel that he must grow up, and that he used to enjoy in the past must be left behind in his youth. But since his evil reputation for will not be easy, dance, fucker, dance, you never had a chance. Mm. The same day, uh, January 10th, 2009, Kristoff shared two different comments on the same day. The first one is, sorry, but it seems extremely obvious that this song is directed towards George W. Bush and the past eight years of incompetence. The word kid refers to him being the son of the elder George Bush. The reference about a thousand lies is a direct reference to his father's thousand points of light. Now, again, Kristoff logged in again and says, almost sounds like a song that would be sung by Saddam Hussein or bin Laden towards Bush. If you can't get what you want, then it's all because of me. Kind of what? interesting. Wow. Wow. Um, so, look, I mean, I think, you know what's funny is I feel like we have not been able to enjoy song meanings for this band just because most of the songs, like, I don't really, like, song meanings is not going to help out with Pretty Fly for a White Guy. Um, and uh, and you're not going to get comments like this from Red X 72 It sounds to me like the guy is a CIA agent <laughs> who starts out as a rookie. Hence the you're getting better all the time line and you're going to go far kid line who becomes more and more sadistic. But as he goes on, the killing becomes more for him than his job. Ooh, I like that. Well, Swan Amir 98 said, I have no idea what it's about. I like to think it's just about having fun. I know that's horribly wrong, but when I hear it, I just want to dance, fuck, or dance. LOL. Ain't that the uh, truth? Well, I don't know that it's going to get better than that. Do you want to dance, fuck, or dance to some, some live selects? <laughs> Please. 
Well, let's take a look at, I mean, this is like the band truly at their bleakest. Uh, this is a video from 2000, like watching like a live video for a song that came out of 2008, never going to be good. Here they are at the T-Mobile Playgrounds uh, like a cool a, around when the song came out. Is that the anti-vex drummer? Whoa, his hair is like fresh out of the shower, relaxed, kind of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think that's the anti-vax drummer. I think the anti-vax drummer shows up on the next album. Okay. But yeah, Dexter's hair is like, very, is like, good. Garnier Fructis looking right now. It's, yeah, it's, he's Fructis now. Look at his, I think his guitar has that, like, metal yeah, texture on it. So like, yeah, it's so sick. Like, metal wall or floor. What would you call that? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. it's like a, almost like a crate kind of look. Yeah. Who's, oh, so Ed, I feel like we haven't seen a lot of this guy, but the, clearly in this era of the band, they had a third guitar player, kind of Green Day style, who's like doing oh, yeah. arms and hanging out at the back of the stage. He looks, he kind of looks like uh, Ryan Cabrera. He has yes. that same hair. Yo, sorry, that part, the before you go back into the verse is horrible. <laughs> this song really is a tale of uh, two, two shitties. Um, <laughs> this part sucks. This part sucks. Okay, so there's, there's two incredible. Wait, is this the chorus? Oh no, this. No, this part's this good. Is, see this? This part's great. I actually kind of think pre-choruses are almost always good. I don't I usually mean, hate a pre-chorus. And this part's good. This could be an Americana single. I uh, think that they're overdoing the harms. The harms sounded really bad to me. Yeah, this is Euro, 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 Euro is some deeply Euro what do you, what do you thing. Have to say, I can tell but this you. was his hair. This was his hair in this hair. Doesn't know whether to start the song or give us a minute. And that's just yeah. having a bit of a laugh stars. here. On drums, beat Parada. Oh, so that is the anti-vax drummer. Oh, sick. And that became like a whole like that was on Joe Rogan and like stuff. That. I noticed when I was looking. Oh at it. yeah, he did. He, when you like look him up, it's like P. Parada Tim Pool. <laughs> Which, like, you know if that's the Google... Like, <laughs> that's uh, their uh, autofill? That yeah, place. like, you, you fucked up. Right? Go for extraordinaire! Greg K! Okay. Oh, you may have heard it on the internet. This is a new song. This one's called You're Gonna Go Far, Kid. Call them to the internets. Never not good. <laughs> I mean, they, this band is fucking huge. Like, every live video they are playing in front of... I know, it's insane to me. Tens of thousands of people. Who are these people? I remember the last time I went to Warp Tour, they were playing, and the crowd that filled in, like, before their set, like, at the main stage, like, it was the biggest crowd of the day, and it was all, like, just people I didn't even, like, recognize vibe you know? Like, it was just, like, yeah, where did that's all, a- like, it, everyone had a backwards fucking Ford hat on, it was... So it was Tom DeLonge was there. I think it's no, like it's Tom I think this is an example of like With learning that you've been living in a bubble. Like when Oh, his he's not hitting those notes, but No. Like he wrote this song this year. You need to make sure you can That's do what it. I mean, yeah. Now, I know what you're thinking. How did this song sound at <laughs> I Hell am Fest? thinking that. Has the, has the 20... ha- has the Health Fest video always been sponsored by Radio Metal Rolling Stone and US France? I think so. I think so, yeah. Uh, That's cool. I don't think they're, cha- they're not changing a lot of that. Oh, now he's hitting the notes perfectly. I do respect the fact that nothing, the tuning never changes. Like, these are always in the same key. So whatever help he needs, like, he's hitting the top of his range every fucking time. This part's so good. Did you say earlier you agreed that pre-chorus is uh, always good? I think it's like it's a bold decision, you know? Yeah. Songs don't always have pre-choruses, so if you do it, it's because you had a good idea. You know, like, you could just go verse chorus but if you put a pre-chorus in there, like, that's it. I also feel like it's it's because pre-chorus is usually, like, palm muted, and it's usually just two chords, and it's usually like you're going F to G or something, and it sounds so sick. Yeah. Wow. God, this... Hurts. 
You're right. It's just like this is we are we are blind. Like we think that Fugazi is a popular band. This is a popular band. Watching this like rich, famous rock star tug at his shirt to cover his gut is also like all. It's kind of deeply humanizing. It's true. He's like. In his hotel room, like, yeah, I'm going to wear this shirt for my big Hellfest performance. It's going to look so sick. But he didn't prepare to be lifting his arm to sing into the mic. Yeah. And he didn't really think about what was going to happen. Or when the sweat congregated on the upper uh, yeah, like half of the dome up, of his tongue. So God, good. I can't fucking listen to this thing anymore, <laughs> man. Well, maybe, maybe you would like to hear a couple of songs. Uh, that are also called "You're Gonna Go Far, Kid." That I wrote down because I had I had never listened to the song before and didn't know what it sounded like, so I wasn't sure. Uh, and this oh, one, they were covers. Yeah, this one is by someone named Shimmy Schwartz, which I thought was a good name, mm. Shimmy Schwartz. Uh, and I thought we I should check that. out Shimmy Schwartz. And a lot of people on this one are commenting, "What the fuck is this?" And they're upset about it. But I don't think it's Offspring, but it could be. It's oh, great, wow. though. Shimmy Schwartz. I love Shimmy Schwartz. Your vision is lost in the haze of your cigarette. You call yourself a martyr in love. You haven't lost anyone yet. The only I thought that this was off screen the next one I first heard it. In a train. I think this was the first thing I listened to You gave yourself those today. scars now, didn't you? You're gonna go far, kid. <laughs> oh, you bet I can tell you're gonna go far, kid. <laughs> Worse? I don't know. Jimmy Schwartz? Uh, let's move is on to Ethan Wilson. Now, this one is just a really cool image. Of, this is You're Gonna Go Far, Kid by Ethan Wilson. He brought his guitar to the beach, which I think is never going to make for a good photo shoot. No matter how cool you think it'll be, bringing your guitar to the beach is never going to work out for you, bud. And also, you got to get the horizon straight on your album art. I mean, that's just fucked. Uh, but then again, what kind of music is this, you know? It's very strange. It's just a lot of people making new types of music. Here, I think... Which I appreciate. I think he starts shredding on that guitar that he took to the beach, though, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I could do with some shredding. Maybe I gotta skip ahead. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I'm, is this better? I don't know. It's a very strange melody, almost a Christmassy kind of melody. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's move, let's check out a couple parodies first before we just really have a rough time with our offspring binge that we're on right now. This is called Dance Faker Dance, and I don't know what it. I think it's to do with. It's another gamer one. Offspring is a big band with gamers. I've noticed. Yeah. It's, it's like Fox Racing slash gamers. I think it's because, so. I think there are actually the. I think I just figured it out. We call Dance Faker. We call everything mall punk, but it's not actually it doesn't reflect the mall properly. Whereas the offspring is like they rep like the offspring is like kiosk music oh. where someone is like entrapping oh, you to yeah. buy imported cologne. This is definitely a ki- mall kiosk punk. <laughs> I don't know. I think this is about League of Legends, I guess. It's about League of Legends esports, uh, specifically this parody. So it might be a little bit niche, but maybe someone's enjoying this. Uh, and then this one's called Join the Herd. This is by Forrest Rain, and this one is uh, a brony cover, or a parody, I mean. I, mean, I don't know if it's. Does a parody have to be funny or can it just what be changing? This weird show? It's like the only thing you know. Mm, you interesting. I mean, com- like, very little you know, comedy is funny, so play. I feel like parody is sort of a subset of comedy. Yeah, I guess you it's know, true. Crowds, like, it would be really preferential to funny, but it's hardly required. Now, think Brony think. Think. Brony's, Brony's stay winning with the pop punk, though. They're so good at it. Girly 
And also they sped it up, I think, which is a good idea. Yeah. Ponies are just for girls, let the still unfurl. Twilight sparkle, pinky pie, apple jack and flutter shine. Do not be afraid. This is so good. Rainbow dash and rarity, join the herd and you will see. Yeah, they even made the gross part go. They did. Can't save this part. I was just too tough. I'm sorry I was rude. I feel happy and renewed. Sorry I was rude. I feel happy and renewed. That's a nice uh, turn of phrase. That was a nice one. That was nice. (laughs) Sam, why don't you do a real quick uh, testimonial about what your experience has been like behind the paywall for all these years of the patreon.com slash 155 bot. You know, my experience behind the paywall is one of just absolute freedom. Uh, freedom from censorship, freedom from the thought police. No, uh, look at the paywall. It's That's kind of true. That is kind of true that how is, we speak is, behind there. That is there. true. We, t- we, we just talk a little more shit. And, uh, and then the thing that's going to happen is we're going to forget. If we ever do unpaywall an episode, we're going to forget which ones were the really spicy ones. And then we're going to yeah, publish yeah. those to everyone. <laughs> it's going to be great. Where we came in like, it's always like we were annoyed about something at work and we said something we shouldn't have. But it but it definitely is uh, these days revisiting that Blink-182 magic. A true treat. Having a blast. Uh, I don't know which, like, I, I'm unstuck in time, and so I don't really know what we talked about this week. Well, actually, that's because this week uh, we haven't done, that's because right now it's November 21st or 22nd, and I've got my new winter tires on, and we haven't uh, had time to do the Scoosie yet, so we've actually, you know, just, we, we switched the order slightly and haven't done the new Scoosie yet, so the topic this week uh, obviously we know what it is and we have it written down and it's come out already. So everyone else knows what it is too. But uh, the, the Blink-155 episode this week uh, is a great one, I think. It's, so it's much. another classic. We got Tom. Another I mean, we got classic. Tom. I'll go ahead and say it. we got Tom. So that's You know kinda... what? There you go. It's, it's snowing in Montreal and we got Tom. So <laughs> all of these things are true on the 22nd of November, 2022. But, but if, yeah, but paywall, if... the paywall rocks. <laughs> Join us. The Discord, which I have not... I've, I've been... Several weeks ago, I was too busy to really be in, active in the Discord. It's interesting um, how you are too busy on the on the spiciest of days in there. Uh, that is, I know, but no, it's killing me. It, it is genuinely killing. Like the minute that, thankfully tonight I'm around, and so I'm going to just do like you're going to do a big scroll. catch up and just. When really, I do a big big catch up and see, I mean, maybe I've don't because now that we're in the future, with hindsight, I realize I would have been better off never reading any of that. Uh, so interesting, just, but you anyway, could, if you want to join the discord, that's the other thing you could do. You could scroll back for like years at this point, I think, and read yeah, all kinds of there's stuff. There's been some good, some good stuff in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there's probably like you know, four good posts over the last, uh, however many years. So that, and then there's a bunch of other ones too. So check them out. Uh, you can learn who Murph is, you know, he's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Murph rocks for sure. Uh, all right, let's kick off with Nightcore, but we're gonna t- we're gonna up the ante a little bit. This isn't actually Nightcore. This is uh, n- the user Nightcore needs to die with the Nightcore needs to oh. die remix. If you're gonna go far, kid. Ooh, I mean that's way better. They've, they've saved the song already. They've saved the episode. They've saved the month. Ooh. I mean, that's just... Oh, this is so fun. It's, it, everything's better now. Except I can still hear a little bit of his kind of, he's doing a little bit. I need to learn words other than stanky, but I don't know how to, else to describe the, the lightly white soulfulness of Dexter Holland's voice in this song. It still comes through in the Nightcore version, and I'm not sure yeah, I like know, people, it. People talk about blue-eyed soul, and I feel like he's got, he's got uh, <laughs> blonde uh, hair, blue-eyed oh. soul. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like I was, I was thinking, I was like, wh- white, white guy, dread soul. You know, I don't know which. Yeah, it's not great. It's dread not punk a, soul. It's yeah, not a great not kind great. of soul to have. Uh, maybe that's why there's so many good gingers who sing. Because isn't that a thing that people say gingers don't have souls? 
Uh, no offense to the gingers. I mean, it might be nice to not have a soul. Really, you could be ruthless you in business. The world. Yeah, you could just do whatever yeah, exactly. you wanted. It's great. Frictionless existence. Uh, <laughs> this next one seems to be the most popular cover of "You're Gonna Go Far, Kid" by The Offspring, which is the song we're still talking about all these hours later. Um, all these years later. <laughs> all yeah. these years. The, 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 the pod. The pod being you know condensed into into two days, but also sort of still broken up. Uh, yeah, we a, had to take very... a little break to do some work. And it's you're saying condensed into two days. I think we are just entering that we did the first of three episodes 24 hours ago right now. So, mm, I, so unfortunately it's a lie. So it did take us, it took us like 25 to 26 hours to finish these episodes. Yeah. So maybe, upsetting. Folk, maybe folks, maybe y'all can tell that it's been, we're kind of lazy, but anyways, this one is, seems to be the most popular. This is by Jonathan Young and Lauren Babick. This one had, there's reaction videos to this. There's something else about this one I'm going to show you right after, but this, is so uh, dog shit. You get it's fucking go. terrible. Fucking. Look at how he's bouncing to that kick drum. This is why they shouldn't have put that kick drum. People are gonna bounce like that while sing, while looking into the. I mean, it, I'm not gonna go ahead and say it. Like the way he's bouncing and grunting and looking into the camera while he does it, it does it not feel like he's fucking us right now? Mm, there's a. There's a. There's a. Oh my god. When you say this is this is the most popular cover, like how popular is this? Let me check. Oh, I still like that little tag, guitar tag. Well, this, this has, has 8.8 8 8 million, million views. Yeah. Like, does the music video even have that much? So many had a lie. You I got my volume up here. That great, um, disgusting YouTube metal tone. Okay, the actual song has 85 million views. But this is still 10% as popular. Listen to that kick, though. But look, who what likes is this also? What is what this is genre? This, who is this for? <laughs> what is Again, so much, like, look at the people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like who is this? Is this who what Fly Leap sounds like? Answers. This is much more popular than anything you and I like that we even think is popular. Oh, guess what? The Lauren Babic is from Toronto. Oh wow! Maybe you're friends with her. I am. She says <laughs> her Twitter bio is really good. It says. These people are obsessed with being a clean vocalist and a, and a nasty vocalist. She's was I la 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 and ra ra in RHD band and crazy eighty eight official. Are these people your friends? I, I, I don't think I'm familiar with any <laughs> she, of these. Listen bands. how she says that part. Listen to this. <laughs> dance, dance, fucker, dance. So cool. Wow. Should we stop swearing, maybe? Like, just for cringe reasons? Swearing is not... I swear too much, but swearing is a mistake. You know how people are like, oh, oh, I need to stop swearing. It makes me sound stupid or whatever. Like, that's kind of... That's a corny reason to stop swearing. But stopping swearing because you don't want to be a touch my butt and touch my jiggly bits, buy me pizza, taco (laughs) night, (laughs) metalhead. You know, like, this kind of, like, epic YouTube metal shit is... That's rough, man. I don't know. Yeah, I um, this is so bad. Sorry, Lauren. It, it, I'm sure you are having again, a great like, time on Blue Street. It doesn't matter that we don't think it's good because this is one of those things where I feel quite confident, just being like, I fucking hate this, and it sucks because it's succeeding in the marketplace of ideas in a way that like nothing, like not even things that I do, but things that I like. Mm-hmm. succeed and therefore like i'm obviously i i, I guess i i'm wrong it, because I, so you still think that if it was you still think that popularity equals worth of some kind it's come even absolutely five years and who five years of weekly no, hips i'm trying to be like the hipster hitch to you and have these sessions with you and try to teach you and you're still not getting it and i've never seen hitch but i just 
thought that was a good uh, <laughs> story. It was good. I liked it. <laughs> no, I, like, and I think anyone who says otherwise is like full of shit. Popular things are good. Uh, that's the most popular thing is the is the goodest thing. That's an interesting. So like fascism stuff like that. Uh, look at it's not for me. Like I'll, I'll, I'll break character here for a minute and say like, look, I don't like it. It's not for okay. Me. It's not. <laughs> it's people not. enjoy things. Well, you know, there's a bunch of shit with this uh, growly, jiggly, rah 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 thing, um, including there's a nightcore version of this one. So I thought I'd quickly play a that nightcore version me. of that version. So yeah. Lie, At least he's not grinding on us anymore because it's just showing an anime lose. guy instead. Oh, it sounds so fucked up, sped up, too. Oh, <laughs> I think Metalcore should have never been allowed to exist. Because people learned how to do these, like, little pre-chorus drum tom fills and... So evil. What do you say? It was too loud. They were, they were being it doesn't loud. matter. It doesn't. It does not matter. Do you want me to start the video again? Is that what you're saying? I think you should start again. I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I was like, run it back. Run it back. I like the blast beat. <laughs> yeah, the blast beat version of it is actually kind of sick. Okay, well here's. Let's check out some guys in a field instead, in a forest. This is Alex underscore PV, hopefully power violence, I don't know. I think this is in Russia based on the characters, but... I mean, this yep. seems pretty Russian to me. What? They're playing poker like, in a forest a, on a bench. I think they brought lawn chairs and a fold table to a bench to play poker. Yeah. Why is that so disconcerting? And it's so cold like, outside. They're like in the cold... It's like when you see, like, you know, a 10-year-old boy destroy an old man at chess in the park, except with, like, stuff from the laundry room on a freezing cold day. Like today, November 22nd. Oh, it's so cold. I mean, this song oh, does seem kind of Russian. Cheating. It does seem like a Russian yeah. song, sort of. This feels like the most appropriate version of it. You think this is like a thing? Do people do this in Russia? Like they play poker, sort of. They they bring their own table. They go to like <laughs> the lost forest, and yeah, people love to bring their guitar outside in an epic way. And I think drumming Uh-oh. outside is cool, but bringing your guitar outside, not so much. Mm, it's interesting. It is drumming is the is the only cool outdoor instrument. Oh yeah, they're getting pissed. Now. So the reason they brought that table is so that they could flip it in a wrestling fashion. Yeah, and exactly. that was like, pretty with, cool. Without being fucking up a, an apartment or something. There's no way that they didn't have a real hell of a time trying to find those pieces because there's leaves everywhere. I mean, it's good. This is this feels like the most appropriate version of the song for sure. Are they going? Oh, they're bringing a show. Did they already kill him? Oh, not yet. They're going to bury him alive. Good. Oh, oh, he's made a skirt out of the playing cards. And they're filming him. And very interesting. What's the band called? Pig Splitter. This, this. No. He just said it. By the off screen. But these guys, these guys look kind of tough. Yeah, these guys look cool. They look like they play in Zibulba or Hoods or something. <laughs> yeah. But they're just in like huh. a suburban living room. And there's no <laughs> singing or anything. Just like a couple of gents on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Couple of Sunday gents. Pig splitter. This is a mechanic and music channel. Everyone is welcome. My band is called Pig Splitter. So there you go. Thanks. Thanks for welcoming us, Pig Splitter. 
Pig Splitter is like a good band name. Again, with the, the, their looks and that name, they could go far. They could go far, kids. I mean, it really is a mechanic and guitar. Oh, there's also 45 minute beginner yoga for men and women extend morning. Uh, and it's 47 minutes long. So, I, I mean, I just don't really understand what if you're a band and you're called Pig Splitter and you're two like guys that could definitely beat the shit out of me in about 10 seconds. What? Why do you upload this? Are you looking for a vocalist? Are you trying to find other people to join? Do you think that someone's going to see this and discover you? Um, even if it was just like, oh, me and my friend are just dicking around playing. That's the the way that it's presented with introducing the band even the start suggests some level of audition or profession professionalism that I think is really interesting to understand why they what they were thinking. You know, what's the purpose? I mean, yeah, but you can ask that about like almost every video we've ever watched on this show. Yeah, maybe we need to go back through them and. and I think we got to go back and just go and just just add in us going why, <laughs> but why, why? <laughs> but, but why? <laughs> <laughs> you could you could ask that, and again, I think we could we could zoom out and ask that of ourselves. Uh huh. Well, I don't want to do that. That's a bit concerning. Okay, that's to too me. far. That's, that's too yeah. Far. I don't want to do that level of self awareness on the "You're Gonna Go Far Kid" episode of uh, mm, Okay, this is Octavio Henrique. Uh, he's doing it on his guitar, and he's looking cool as hell while he does it too. A bunch of cool looking guys. I mean, that's just the the title page alone. Different fit cool variation of comic comic songs on here so uh, it's a long a long title eh? yeah and it says by maximum maximum spelled with an oh, n at the end these guys are cool <laughs> <laughs> so i guess that that might be maximum uh, himself just like a nine-year-old boy i mean he's probably not nine he's probably like 16 yeah he looks shades too big shirt open I can't so tell if the shirts. if the wobble of the camera is because it's balanced on a cushion or if like or if a family member is filming. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. he's he's crushing it though. I'm trying to figure out how to spell this. It's two R's. There we go. Octavio Henry. I've had his Twitter. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Create a project for your life and believe in it. The bio um, translated from Portuguese. So maybe that's why people do these videos. Maybe the answer. But take you Henrique's incident. So up next is uh, Rachel Music. Now this is a cover, and it's also a female version, is what it says in the title here. So in case anyone, and you know, I was curious about. I've noticed that people love to say that female fronted is not a genre, and I think that's really disrespectful. I think we need to be welcoming uh the the other half into the fold you know why would you say mm. that's not a not a genre when how, they're gonna feel like you think it's sexist to say that female fronted is not a genre well i'm just trying to say i mean it, it they should be allowed to play music shouldn't they i mean uh i get i get well let's find out there's, I'm sorry. I'm gonna delete this part. Uh, this is Rachel Music 58. <laughs> She's rocking it. Look at her guitarist. Too. You know what? If this is what female versions of songs are gonna be like, I'm down. Yeah, we should have more of these. I don't know why people would do yeah. that. Like. Cool, the little gallop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, does the song gallop like that? I don't, I don't think, think so. So there's actually a few uh, female versions of this. Oh, we're in the female zone. This, this, this was by Brogan Vanessa, which I assume... Probably written backwards, maybe? Show me how to lie, you're getting better all the time And turning all against the one is an art that's hard to teach Another clever word sets off an unsuspecting it's a very dry vocal, eh? It's very dry. It's the driest vocal I've heard in a long time. Maybe, maybe dry vocals need to come back. Yeah, dry them vocals. I can't believe how good this part of the song is. It's so good. 
like, it's, it has the killer's vibes, actually. Really good. Oh, totally. Great arms, great arms. Yeah, right is good. You love this song. I, 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 I feel like I have not heard a song in a long time that is like so good. Like I really, really do like the pre-chorus and the chorus and the, and the verse is like one of the worst things I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> fucking life. And I feel like it, I don't know that you get, like, I feel like some things are just as the kids say mid, you know, mm. there's things that I love that activate me as a, you know, uh, one of whatever fucking shit I say all the time. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've heard And some things are not before. for me. Like, I don't think I've ever heard like fascism. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's brave stance to take. Right. Look at uh, it. It's as far as I'm willing to go on it, but so I don't really get what this one is. This is uploaded by Lil Ocelot Premium, and it seems to be a clip of something originally made by someone called Overly Sarcastic, which I think is Great. a cover of this, but I can't mm-hmm. figure out what I'm looking at here. I think so. With a thousand lies and a good disguise, I hit him right between the eyes. I think this is a big, like, uh, deviant art imagery kind of say see the lightning in your eyes see him running for their lives it said this original video it's from miscell- miscellaneous myth zahak the serpent king uh was the original video so i don't know if that's in the soundtrack of this sort of animated folklore deviant art type vibe but I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but it, I'm just happy. There's to... mysterious vibes abound. <laughs> yeah. Well, this next one, I thought I just wanted to play this for a second because it's the best possible name for a teen rock band I've ever heard. This is Smoking Kills. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, oh, the bass player has a him shirt on. Uh, this is great. Like smoking kills has like as a phrase it feels rocker, but the, to be anti-smoking is obviously not very rock and roll. But I guess that's why it works. It would almost be cool if they were called smoking kills, but then they smoked. Oh, like they don't give a fuck. They're from that's that's a good idea. They're from Bristol. It's you know I feel like uh, he's a bad guy now, but I I do like that they give her smoking movie. Oh yeah, I saw that a million years ago. But I don't really remember it. That, yeah, that felt like it was like the it. era of uh, Super Size Me too, of like epic corporate dunks uh, kind of movies. Yeah, it was an epic corporate dunk, but like no one smokes in that movie. It's like one of those. Like, mm, that's that's so. The, uh, th- this band should smoke in the I grand think that spirit would help. of. Uh, but shout yeah. out Smoking Kills, great band name. Uh, this is Modificat, and this is. You're going to go far, kid, modificat, audio, one, comma, two. So I don't, it feels like it might just be Nightcore, but I was, oh, no, I think it's, I think it changes a lot. He just has an atrocious voice. Whoa. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, that's annoying. Uh, who, who played that? There we go. Okay. Nice I think it's just someone kind of goofing around. Maybe. Yeah, just, 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 just having a, having a, having a goofy fun time. Yeah, that's interesting, I guess. What yeah, is, okay. what is the instrument of that, uh, boom, 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 boom. I think it's like a delay soak guitar, but it almost sounds like a, a Brian Eno by way of YouTube piano or something too. It has like all that you can't leave behind vibes. The piano thing mm. in that pre-chorus, ooh, it's so good. It's good. It's good. Well, this is a different kind of piano, piano uh, called an accordion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, this one's so This is sad. its home. This is its home. This also has Russian vibes, kind of, with the some of the text on the channel. And it also has gentle wobble that suggests a parent filming it, but or a bouncy pillow. Yeah, I think this is parent. This isn't pillow. 
Parent or pillow? This could be a, a game. All right, let's keep going. Let's check out some strings. There's a couple. This is the string section. The first string cover comes via Sheila Wilder. Oh, I knew I'd love a string version. Yeah. Is there a melody that doesn't sound good in string ver- What's your What's your most hated melody? Ooh. Mm, mm, mm. Also, oh, this sounds very out of tune. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. What is my most hated melody? Oh, um, uh, the, the song Watermelon Sugar. Oh, okay. I don't know if I know the... No, we used to listen to a lot of, like, uh, Beats One Radio, you know, during the work day. And they play that song a lot. They watermelon sugar. That's you hate that answer. song? What about you? Yeah, I hate that song. I hate that melody. I think it's horrible. I don't know if I have one, but let's just see real quick, just to test. I mean, to test if you're a neutral. Or What's up, Jam Bam? Welcome back to the channel <laughs> where we cover Good test. Right here with classical musicians. You'll recognize I mean, this intro is there, pretty upsetting. Yes, JHM Jam's debut. Anastasia. To calm down. Very exciting. They're, they're pumped. No, I appreciate their enthusiasm. Well, I'm glad they're sharing it with us and not just rushing it not just playing dry classical out. music, but they're showing us some character. So today we're covering Watermelon Sugar by Harry Styles. Great tune. I hate Super it. Super catchy. If you enjoyed these series, don't forget to like Oh, she just hit her violin. You fucked up the take. Tell comments what you think. All right. Enjoy. Here we go. All right. This is beautiful. So far, it's pretty good. I don't think you dislike any strings. Strings. I think it's strings. Oh, yeah, I remember this song. I mean, this is great. Yeah, you see, you, you're always going to like strings. Or are you? Because let's go back to the offspring world. Check out <laughs> pristine strings with a Z at the end. Now, this is much different kind of string arrangement, as you'll see by the art. <laughs> I mean, These are like two rocking guys. They're like guys who rock when yeah, they string. They're, they're like, they're standing on top of the horizon of a storm, basically. Like, it's not, I, I thought they were on water at first, but they're not. They're just like on a, they're standing on a storm. And they're wearing skinnies with high tops and backwards snapbacks. So cool. They look like they look like they would smell like cigarettes and sour candy, like airhead or yes. airheads or something. Yeah. Oh. This is so bad. For some reason, this makes me think of the Dragon's Den. Like I feel like someone would come out to oh, this. Oh yeah, like, for sure. This definitely feels like Dragon's Den music, where you're like. I'm about to be dressed down by the guy who owns Boston Pizza. <laughs> uh, Boston Pizza guy is going to really rake me over the coals for my inflated numbers. The one guy, the, I love the newer guy on Dragon's Den who's like, has hockey hair and like acne scars on his face and he's like such a rocker hotshot. I can't You're remember. talking about Weck? You're talking about Weck. I think so. Yeah. Fuck, that yeah. guy's so cool. Mike, Michael Weckerly. I would love to be a, a guy with hockey hair and acne scars and floral suits from Le Chateau, like a true Canadian he, businessman. He owns the Elma Combo now. Um, oh, um, yeah, that's a whole thing. Okay, let's check out Tashulia 90. This is a nice p- earnest piano sing-along cover. Show me how to lie. You're getting better all the time and turning all against one. It's hard to be mad at this one. No, this is great. Especially if you read it. Let me find you the caption. The caption really helps. You love this one. My favorite one. Just, just not perfect, but with heart, she says. Oh, it's true. What more can we ask for? Just a simple, you know, I don't know if this is a bedroom. Where are we here? I can't tell by the ceiling. Like we're just yeah, it's like a cabin or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's it's flawed in all the right ways. <laughs> it's a very jaunty kind of song. It's so jaunty. Maybe we can slow it down with a surf rock version from Kazuwa. 
I don't know why he's dressed like a valet guy. It's not really a surf thing, is it? No. You see, this is a valet guy? Valet, valet. Like, oh, valet. Yeah. I was like, guy, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this what if there was a, never been to the ballet. What if there was a valet valet? That'd be kind of cool. Oh, or a valet valet. They just pirouette off of your car. I don't know. Does this sound? Close your eyes. Does this sound like surf music to you? I guess. I guess it does. Just because there's like tremolo on the guitar. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now it does. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what his look is. He's the, he's the ballet ballet. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, unfortunately, the time has come for. Her. Now this person's name is Ali, A L I, but the username mm-hmm. is. Ukulele, all one word. Ukulele, ukulele. Oh, come on, man. I don't think I've ever seen a uke with like a cutout. So you can really shred that. Yeah, it's cool. Also, there's a wooden sign on the wall that says "Home is where they have to let you in." Interesting. Interesting thought. This, you don't get the oops, oops, oops. Yeah. And even though the verse melody is still not as good as the rest of the song, it, it reduces. Like it, look, it it's don't, less gross. Ukulele, yeah, the ukulele, ukulele brings in a whole other grotesque element. But this is just nice. I think because we just talked about the bitch song for like six hours last night, <laughs> yeah. we're not really. Like dance We're fucker, not in an objective space. Dance fucker dance is really grody. I, it's a terrible thing to lead your whatever chorus or pre-chorus or whatever that is. That's disgusting. And I keep wishing that people would change it. Like when some people were trying to change the B word. Uh, all well, one of the one of the ago. one of the gamers I think made it dance faker dance, which is not better. Oh yeah, that was for the parody. That was probably based in some kind of League of Legends lore that we're unaware of, though. So that's kind right, of different. yeah. We just don't get the um, joke. But let's see what the fl- what the fluters have to say. There's two flute videos. This one's from Kendall. Uh, you're gonna go flute, fucking flute. F- flute cover. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to attempt going to attempt to play. You're gonna go far, kid, by the Offspring on my flute. I don't sing on camera. What, what year is this video from? It's like it's artifacted really in a way that I haven't seen like since real play. It's only five years made. old. Influence. That's what? bizarre. Just I hope you enjoy listening to high school me messing up notes. Oh well. I mean, I love I'm listening kind of to high school students mess up notes. Breathing right now. Yeah. I've been it's one of the only so much, joys in my life. I will still try. I will do it for whoever will see this later. <laughs> anyway. That's us. Us. Yeah, that was for so, us, Kendall. Thank you. Go. The people who are going to see it later. <laughs> This is sick. This is so good. What does this remind me of? It could be like Architecture in Helsinki or something, or like some 2005 wave music. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't listen to a lot of bands that were doing this, but (laughs) I believe that you did. (laughs) Yeah. But it's better, because Candle's putting her own spin on it, crushing it. That part, that little chord is pretty sick. It's pretty epic. I guess if I had one critique of Kendall, it would be nothing about her performance or her placement in this artifacted video that's the same age as the pod. Uh, it would just be that her her username doesn't. Oh, she's cooking. Her username doesn't tell me enough about her, so that's why I'm very excited to introduce you to my new friend, Fluting Ashley. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also playing over the piano score. Yeah. What make, really why is this such a flute, flute jam? Yeah. Judy <laughs> Ashley's sort of got the music stand blocking her face, and so it's just yeah. It's but, just like a weird black bar, like it's reflecting. It's, it's just aesthetically very strange. It's mostly a big black music stand square, but that's because. Fluting Ashley is about fluting. Her face will just mm. distract you from the pure flutery of it all. 
That's true, that's true. And she's done a bunch of Maybe chain this smokers. This is like a thing that they teach in flute school. It must be. There must be something about this melody that makes it so flutable. Yeah. That's sick. Fluting Ashley. Uh, also, I love the colors of her room. It's very, like, it's a TV set dressed room. Uh, yeah, I was like, do kids really have rooms like this? Like, it's, it's delightful. It's like Nickelodeon, vi- or like uh, Treehouse TV Dis- vibes. Disney Channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, let's move on to another mouth instrument. Uh, this is uploaded by Multi Instrumental, but Multi Instrumental this time has chosen Melodica to cover the offspring. Oh, love the Melodica. Oh, doing like some kind of chord work with one hand while playing the melody. That's so sick. I like it just periodically kind of like looking a little bit down the melodica and then looking right up eye contact with the camera. <laughs> Excellent. Truly excellent. This is so much better. Tim Carson some commented two years ago. I sang like every word over this masterpiece. Yes. But then you didn't hear it. Some guy sitting here <laughs> singing along to a child's melodica video. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Again, I can't understand the conservatives sitting there with his legs crossed. It's great. Yeah, he's like has like no charisma to the point where it's like He's, he's aloof. Sick. He doesn't give a fuck yeah. that he's doing this. Well, we heard some string sections before, but how about the pure violin cover? Now, this one, the art is just so good. Uh, this is, there's some sort of anime character uh, holding a nunchucks, I think, on atop yeah. a cityscape. That What city is this? It looks familiar to me. There's a Scotiabank logo in it. On it, is that is Scotiabank so everywhere? Does that mean it has to be Canada? Is Scotiabank yeah. only in Canada, or is it elsewhere? Uh, that's what I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to Google it. That looks. I don't know. Is that Calgary? Maybe that's it, Calgary. It kind of looks like Calgary, but it's like it has too much swag to be Calgary. I think maybe it's Quebec. I don't actually, this round building. Maybe it's Quebec. Maybe it's somewhere in Quebec. French violin covers. Could be. Uh, but see. anyways, the, look up. there's this cool anime character drawn atop of uh, like nighttime cityscape I think it might be Montreal maybe but I don't recognize that circular building hmm yeah I feel like the su- circular building here look at, I'm, I'm looking at some Quebec City parts. you know it's hard to get a picture of Quebec City that's not you know the nice part I don't think it's Quebec City Like it well, it's too does big to be anywhere in Saskatchewan. It must be Montreal, and I've just not. I'm just, I haven't seen that. I think it is Montreal. That's great because there's another Montreal one coming up, but yeah, it's definitely Montreal. It really makes you realize how important CN Tower is. You know, that's <laughs> true. It's definitely Montreal. That's why it looks so familiar to me, because this is exactly what it looks like out my window. Yeah. With the anime girl also flying in to kill me with her nunchucks. Well, this one's nice. I I think it's the same... vibe every day. It's the same backing track as uh, the Melodica fella, and I love how the crunchy guitar sounds so bad. It's just so cool. And then the violin it's is so peaking good. in a nice way. It's such a fucking hit. It's such yeah. a hit with like There's so many a versions. very unique kind of person. Like it's very good, big with like bronies, anime people, uh, the flute community, obviously. Here, here's a marching Flutus band love it. doing it. Um, oh, yes. I feel like we haven't heard a marching band in a minute. In yeah. Episode. I think there's a couple marching bands. I might have only been down one. This is the Blutzer three, Blutzer three drum kit, Start Schlomp, yes, 2016. Oh yeah, there's like, I think there's a Swiss flag maybe. This is like a Swiss marching band. In fact, they're in front of a giant like paper mache mountain or something. So cool. Everyone's dressed like they're in European vacation. Yeah.
even though we don't understand it and it doesn't resonate with us, there's something that the offspring are doing that's like they know what they're doing. Yeah, man. Well, actually, you love them also, so I forgot that you Yeah, maybe that's maybe this is a revelation for you, but not for me. Here's another marching band. Uh, this is from a studio recording. 50 The Gold Standards. This is the USC Trojan Marching Band. I kind of think every melody would sound good in marching band version too. Yeah, I bet watermelon sugar sounds great in marching band. See, that that band was like missing. That that's what I want. I want the like drum line sound. Yeah. They just do it different over in Switzerland, I guess. Yeah, it's not the same. Ooh. Oh, yeah, man. that hits. Fucking hell, that hits. That's really good, man. It's really good. All right, well, we're kind of like in a school zone, so let me show you a couple from some music schools. This is from Jam School videos. Whoa. This just sounds like the Go Team now, who I love. Yeah, yeah. So this is called Arrowheads. It's some kids from Jam School videos. This is like, a, I think, a music school. This one's really cute. Quarantine video sessions. Arrowheads, it's like a pretty hard name. Oh, you think this little girl's gonna swear? I hope so. That's always yes. funny. Dance sucker, right? Oh. There's a piano out of frame that's cooking, but mostly we're getting a five shot. Of a bunch of like absolute infants. The drummer is crushing it though. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that was jam school. I wish that's what Kids Bop sounded like. Yeah, well, Kids Bop does sound really good and is a great uh, musical. Kids Bop rocks. But the idea of it being more fully ramshackled. Yeah, absolutely, kind of... absolutely. Similarly, this one, this is the Wima station, W-I-M-A. I think this is in Montreal as well. This is like another kid's school where they make like a music video. This does feel like a song that the Kevin Kwa would love. Yeah. Like this, this, this sounds like French rock music. It really does. And also, it, is, it does seem like perfect little kid music. Totally. Dance, dance what? Buddy dance? Buddy? Who's this dance buddy? Oh, the drumming is so good. Yes. This is so sick. Genuinely, this sounds so much better. This is my favorite version of the song. Replacing uh, fucker with buddy kind of reminds me because I feel like uh, if I'm, say, singing along to a, a rap song that has uh, words I'm not supposed to use, buddy is kind of my go-to. It is? Uh, yeah, and I'm like, do you have a, a go to? I mean, I don't really find myself singing along to rap songs right now. So <laughs> no, there's not really a thing. Okay. I know someone that you love, who I'm going to put in the YouTube chat, told me they used to say <laughs> fella in there. Oh, which is, I think that's worse, right? Well, you tell, now that yeah. you know who it is, you <laughs> think it's worse. I do think it's worse. This is now. so sick. Imagine if there was like a pop punk band and it sounded like this. Oh. People are getting their little kids to be too good at music. Like, this is how it should sound. Exactly. It sounds like black metal, actually. The guitar. Yeah. It also feels like the person filming it is a kid, too, because it's like <laughs> kind of dropping. And... <laughs> the drummer is so sick. It's just okay. staring directly into the camera while doing the Oompa beat. This is so cool. I think there's a dad adding octave chords after the fact, because that boy, is, there's no way he's doing this. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! What are the Oh, the singer's in uh, Fortnite the dances. Fortnite, Fortnite dances. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think Fortnite making all kids like really good at dancing <laughs> makes family gatherings like 
twenty percent more entertaining. This is incredible. Just the random Fortnite dancing is so great. <laughs> This is, the, this is the best cover I've heard. We listened to this whole thing. Yeah, we did. I, I can't even. I also love how the singer, like, clearly listens to, I don't know what, but, like, real music. You know? She's, like, sing, she's like singing. She has a little bit of a, a little bit of curses in her voice. It was just the camera just caught a, the head stop. What, what did she say at the end? I oh alibis instead of alibis. Oh, what is is that? Something I said I said alibis again. She clearly read the word out. Oh, I see. I get it. Oh, alibi. that's great. And they still. Oh man, that was so cool. That like was basically the yeah yeah yeahs, wasn't it? Like, isn't that kind of what they sounded like at the start? <laughs> I think. I, yeah, I think so. <clears throat> I tried. Listen, I tried movie. listening to them once after reading that book, and I, I, just, I just still don't care for it. I think the documentary is either out this week or coming out very soon. So we, you know, I'm really looking forward to. I'm watching seeing it in it. only a few days from this. <laughs> uh, from really? this, the uh, basically recording. when it comes to the rest of the month, as of today, now that I've got my winter tires on, all I have to do is think about seeing Meet Me in the Bathroom and paying my rent are the two things left <laughs> uh, for it. me to do on my current plate of acti- my, the things on my plate now Sam this is a Eurobeat remix of You're Gonna Go Far Kid that's the other confusing thing about The Offspring is like why are they such a big like Euro trash band well I think they're just like a big trash band in general and that includes <laughs> the Euros <laughs> it sounds so good ignorance of The Offspring is like Starting to border on class. <laughs> it's just strange to me because I hear the melodies are there that work perfectly in this context, but his voice is disgusting. He does not have a good voice. I guess it comes through nice and it works really well in this context. Um, the second remix I have of this one is. By Swamp Swamp Dog. Swamp Dog is this one. This is a Swamp Dog remix. I still think it's very strange. I don't know why. Something really weird about the offspring being like huge in EDM trash circles. Accidentally write melodies that are perfect for this context for Jello shots. So. I think they, look, they write melodies that are perfect in any context, but this is like, yeah, I mean, I would love to do a Jello shooter right now. I feel like the Offspring should do a residency in Reno instead of Vegas. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's that really captures it. Does he sing it? Or just the melody? He doesn't even sing in it. I mean, I guess saying dance fucker dance is a kind of a perfect drop uh, in a song. So that. Yeah, that's true. So finally, uh, for the last cover, I wanted to sort of, we started with Nightcore. I thought we could check out some hardcore via another Scream cover from our friend Prototype, who spells the first O with a zero and the E with a three. Uh, So we obviously heard this recently on the Why Don't You Get a Job episode i almost call it mama why don't you get a job but it's late november i've learned my lesson you know it's you've, the end you, of yeah the month. you've absorbed that, that learning. <laughs> over time yeah uh so here's prototype you're gonna go fucking scream cover show me how to lie you're getting better better on time and turning out against the one Man. isn't hard to show, touch show, show, turned show. on a if you had and these no vocals over top of those little kids thin shredding guitars you like it 
I mean, it's just also, yeah. I'm dead. With a thousand lights and a good day sky, and a night between the lights. It's hard to believe that we've only got one Offspring song left to talk about after this. I mean... Wow. Or we, we're obviously going to do the off right? I mean, come on. How could, <laughs> we, how could we not? I think if we did one more month of this, I would actually lose my mind. I feel like I, I feel sick and I feel horrible. My head hurts. <laughs> I've, my throat, from talking so much in the last 24 hours, my throat has a little bit of a, a faint blood feeling in it. Uh, right now, I feel like I'm. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting a cold. I like. I, I don't. I don't feel good. I, you know, when we did two months of Fugazi, I was like, we could we could do a Fugazi podcast. Like we could do yeah. every song, and it would be delightful. And whereas this, like, the end of this month cannot come soon enough. And yet, I love all of these songs. I mean, so I'm having a great time lies too. The tension That's the of thing. The off. The off. I, the off. I wouldn't have it any other way. November. I love. I love how disgusting all of this content is, and that we get to keep doing it, and that someone's listening to it. I mean, all of that is beautiful, but I also feel like I am drowning. Uh, and that's kind of an interesting dichotomy, isn't it? It's, we're not, it's not Blingo 55 anymore. You want to talk about drowning, you take that behind the paywall, that's some Mark Hoppus shit. Patreon.com slash 155 pod. I'm very excited to finally be talking to someone that I've spoken, you know, we've spoken a lot via uh, the old Bird app for many years, but I, I, to be and to be honest... He has a Patreon-only podcast that I have not ponied up for. This is my first time hearing his voice out loud, but I still think he might be my brother. It's Donald Hughes, uh, a.k.a. <laughs> Get Fiscal. What's up? My Hughes brother. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice to finally uh, chat. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, you are a Hughes. I, we're probably not. Like, I was, I was getting really excited, but my family is from Manitoba, mostly. So I don't think that we're... Uh, we're probably not related. No. no, I think it's like the eighth most popular name in England or something. I don't know. It's a, it's like it's pretty high up there. I think for Hughes, I don't know. That's, so, yeah, but I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there might be people who don't know who you are, and I would love to know. I mean, I have some ideas of who you are, but how would you introduce yourself on a pop punk podcast? <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, it tells little jokes. That's a. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's about it. That's There's not true. much more to it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I I, uh, I I like I technically have like an economics degree and stuff, and like have worked in that kind of area a little bit here and there and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I just uh, goof off. That's about <laughs> you it, just goof off. Point. But on like a <laughs> on some kind of like profoundly next level uh, goofery. Oh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I I recently had a, sort of a crisis of my own because uh, I did this. You know, our listeners will have heard, but I did this interview with GQ magazine about Travis Barker, uh, talking about kind of my you know my my broad view of his career and who he is and whatnot. And I and when I was kind of explaining who I am to the interviewer. I said, uh, some people might say I'm a shit poster, but I really hate that term. And then I realized after that he was going to probably use the term shit poster or what if he said self-described. So I like panicked and wrote him so many times being like, please don't use the word shit poster. I hate that word. <laughs> but, oh, but, yeah. but I mean, I think like, <laughs> I think that you are kind of the, uh, you know, not that term, but y- 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 there's, no, there's really no way to describe it without being gross, but you've kind of like invented a new level of irony, I think. Maybe. Okay. Is that fair? Is that know. fair to say? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Like, I, I, I can't. I can't give any ground on this because because uh, you're doing the post. It's, it's impossible it's, to know. Like if you're the one doing the post, then how can you really comment? It's, that's for you're creating the art, and it's up to the interpreter to really view what you're doing. <laughs> right? Is that well? It's also it's also like I should probably just like have a normal job or something. That's the thing. You know what I mean? It's like it's, like, it, it's a bit of a vice kind of thing. It's not <laughs> right. You know. I don't know. I think I think if someone hears this and doesn't know who I am, then it's sort of like, what does he do then? What does he he like? He posts. So, he posts about uh, Wonder Woman and Catholicism. <laughs> <laughs> he writes for Jacobin, which that's real, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. I have written a few for Jackman. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I so. don't even know how to pronounce the name of the magazine. Sure. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, but yeah. I mean, for those who do know who both of us are on Twitter, I think it's been really 
fun. I mean, whenever someone says to me that I, that I get physical to someone, I mean, that's the biggest honor, I think. But I've never... One thing that you do is you donate the faves to things that blow sure. up too much. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess... I the, saw that, yeah. The real timing of this... That, oh, go ahead, please. Sorry. But uh, I saw that uh, Elon was thinking about turning it into like some sort of crypto where like you get like likes or something would actually be valuable so that like I could actually do it in the future maybe. But if like the site survives, <laughs> yes. I could actually donate the likes to things. But so I don't know, maybe I'm going to have to like think that through because if there's actual <laughs> right. fiscal, you know, rewards to me or something, I can't be like, you know. But that's the thing is like normally I wouldn't talk so much uh, shop about Twitter, but I, sure. I think I've been thinking about it a little bit because you know I do I have a job I have this podcast I have other things going on I have a wife sure. I'm not trying to brag yeah. I'm not trying to dunk on you or brag I'm just <laughs> sure. saying I do have these things but yeah, yeah, but yeah. this specific part of my ego and my personality exists in one place which is twitter and i think <laughs> sure. if yeah, if yeah, it yeah. goes that probably it's a good thing but that character is going to die i think cuz i don't know where else i could be that kind of person sure i'm curious has yeah. that been like do you know people it's fun to joke about with twitter possibly leaving have you been having any kind of existential crisis about it no <laughs> no, no no it's sort of the opposite where i feel pretty zen about it because uh, like i used to do sort of similar jokes and stuff to, to very small groups of people. And a lot of the times those groups of people also like, like the broader people around them would like really not like it, like really, <laughs> really not a lot of good positive feedback. Twitter was like the first positive feedback I got about it kind of thing. <laughs> right. And uh, so it's, it, I feel like it's like a karmic balance or something where like, <laughs> if it goes away, that's fine because like I've, I've, I, it's like, you know, you've posted the small groups before, you'll do it again kind of thing right, or right. something. Or so it's like, you know. I yeah. was hoping it would be like you would you would write the next Confederacy of Dunces or something. Oh, if sure. Is gone. Yeah, I mean, that, I should, yeah, I, I that should really be the plan is uh, converting. <laughs> like, in theory, I should stop posting anything for free, right? Like, I should be writing books or stuff like that. It's hard for me to make that transition because it seems absurd to some level like it's <laughs> right. just the idea i think growing up like the idea of like writing for money or something just it seemed like like r work was like you like you know it was like uh, you walked down to the factory or whatever kind of thing right like it wouldn't like it wasn't like you could get paid for cultural things that just didn't make sense in my mind so even now i'm like maybe i should get a job at the bank or something you know or something you know like <laughs> right, it's like right <laughs> it's like <laughs> I don't know. So we'll see how that works out. But that is the plan. I think, I don't know. I've had a lot of like health scares and stuff this year. So next year, I think we'll, I'll be working hard on this kind of stuff. So we'll see. Yeah. So next year you're going to be like, cause you, you've had a lot of the Dawn arc uh, has been wild because you, you used to be a conservative uh, and, and you know, you, there's so many persona attached to you online and people obviously, and you don't have to tell me, if any of them are bits or real or whatever, but you've been through so many things and you're saying by this time next year, you hope to be uh, a super wealthy banker. Who's <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I hope to be writing more articles. And uh, like yeah. Yeah. That. Okay. So we'll see. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, so, so anyways, so, yeah. so the reason you're here also is because of a tweet and I'm so excited that you tweeted this because it, it got very little traction for you in general, but uh, it was kind of the perfect I don't know, maybe dog whistle, I guess, if we could use that term and strip it of all of its uh, negative connotations. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, earlier this year, February 6th, 2022, you tweeted, I have randomly heard the Offspring song, You're Gonna Go Far, Kid, a number of times in the past few weeks, but I had no memory of it before this. So part of me started spinning Mandela Effect conspiracies, but it's just because I came out in 2008 and I'm, it came out in 2008 and I'm very old. So Don, I, I guess... Before we talk about this tweet, I would like to know about your own kind of musical history. I mean, did you ever have a punk phase in your life? Yeah, so I did. I mean, so I, uh, I'm i old enough that, like, so the mid-90s were when I first started listening to music a fair bit kind of thing. And um, and uh, especially, like, you know, and into the late 90s. But, like, so when Offspring's, like, Smash came out, like, I had, like, a friend of mine had it and stuff. So we would listen to it. And, um, you know, like... It was that sort of era of punk kind of like that, you know, that where it's very starts getting into like pop punk pretty quickly after that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And um, 
so yeah, like that was like my first sort of uh, uh, experience of this kind of stuff. And then my friends sort of got into like pop punk uh, on one kind of angle, and then on the other, like I had a friend that like would dig into sort of the history of punk and stuff, and would get really into like Black Flag and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I got both of it. I, I For me, for, like, music and stuff, a lot of the time, I felt like I was just sort of, like, receiving it from friends and stuff. Like, I wasn't, like, like, I would just, I would listen to it, but it wasn't, like, I didn't get deep into it myself ever. Like, I wouldn't know the names of any of the people involved or anything like that. I just enjoyed listening to it kind of thing. So yeah. Right, yeah. So you never, like, had a, a phase where you were, like, going to shows and you had a lip ring or something? No. That's, no, I mean, no, no. There's still yeah. time, really. Next year's plan. What about in general? Like, I feel like, yeah, I, I'd love to understand more about what, I mean, what music did, have you, has music like played much of a role in your life in general? Or you just kind of, you know, you enjoyed things that friends around you were listening to and then. It, it does, but like, it's more it, like, I, like a lot of it was like, my mom would listen to like, uh, oldies growing up so like mid 60s music a lot of it in in both like soul and also sort of like mainstream pop and stuff whatever like like all over that kind of stuff like you know the bubblegum pop and everything like that would be a big thing where i would hear that every day for like hours kind of thing i think so you know it it was a big part of it and then also you know just like uh the 70s rock kind of stuff, you know, like in CanCon content and all that. And uh, um, I think, yeah, that was like a big part of it for me it was like and then, you know, after that, it wasn't really like, you know, like I, I kind of got like I didn't even know any of this like period of music really existed, like in terms of like offspring and stuff like, <laughs> like from the mid 2000s and stuff. I don't know. I just wasn't into music at all for some reason. I just only listened to stuff from the 60s and 70s and stuff. So right. that, I guess that would be mostly it, like stuff like Soul and stuff and uh, like Bob Dylan or something. And, right. Yeah. Maybe, like maybe maybe what it is is some people find, quote, their tribe. Oh, that's such a gross phrase. To say. I keep saying <laughs> disgusting <laughs> phrases out loud. But sure, people yeah. find their tribe through, uh, you know, maybe it's through music or maybe it's through even posting on a message board or, or through yeah. politics or whatever. So sure. maybe, maybe you didn't yeah. need it to, to figure out who Don Hughes is. Sure. It was mostly like politics, I think for me and uh, like education and stuff, like taking different courses and stuff. I think that was like sort of how I like oriented myself in the world or something. Right. So yeah. Um, yeah. There, so there is, a, you know, we're kind of still trying to figure it out and thank God we're going to stop talking about the offspring soon. Cause I think they're horrible, but um, <laughs> we're still trying to, but, the, but there is this kind of like, sort of uh neocon thread in all of, in a lot of their lyrics i mean they have this song like why don't you get a job and it's about this woman and that's uh sure the leeching yeah. off of her boyfriend and they, they a lot of people think that they are secretly conservative and that has been a narrative especially in like the the current kind of hyper freedom of speech era that people think that being conservative is the new punk rock, uh, which is just such a hilarious yeah. phrase. And and from like a sure. from an ironic perspective, obviously, I think it's beautiful. But I mean, sure. I don't yeah. know if there's any validity to it. Have you ever come across this phrase or had to wrestle with that at all? Oh, conservative is the new punk rock and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, like, so I was I was conservative for a few years from like maybe like 2000 to 2004 or something like that. Like I was involved in all the young Tory kind of stuff and all that. And um, like, I, I think that like a lot of those people like, yeah, they, they they do think of themselves as being like, OK, you know, uh, we're the real you know, whatever. And you find that with like everything back and forth, like we're the real rebels. We're the real like fighters and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, it's funny because uh, it, 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 I guess, you know, all politics does this, but like it's like both sides of it are like, you know, like Hitler is the real left wing guy or something, right? Like he's the right. real socialist and stuff, but also he was right to fight the Soviet union because, you know, like they, there's like, it's it's both sides where like you get every aspect of it rolled up into it or something kind of thing yeah so i don't know i find that funny that like but yeah i don't know it's, it's a bit silly. and like or like the campus crazies kind of stuff like the you know like oh these people on campus are so weird now and stuff and then but at the same time they'll be like well yeah like it's not it's not a 
we were the real rebels that were like, you know, punk rock or something. It's like, yeah, okay, well, what, <laughs> right. what, what do you want? Like, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just something I, I've noticed even uh, aesthetically or culturally is that everybody wants to be punk rock so badly. Sure. I mean, it's not that yeah. – what, what's so great about it? Why don't you just be normal? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the tweet. You, so you're familiar with The Offspring – you kind of yeah. mostly know like Bob Dylan. You're, you're just – you're too literary and smart for this <laughs> bullshit okay. that people like. Uh, so so what what's going on in – I mean I had actually never heard of this song until this week. And you – Oh, really? So February 2022, you live in rural Ontario. I assume that's where you were. Tell me what's going sure. on. You keep hearing this Offspring song. So I don't know. It must have come up on like I, I'm not even sure where it could have come up on. Maybe like commercials or like people have made a message it or something. Or I think it might have also come up on like a random or something on my phone or something. You know, like the um, Spotify or something. I was listening to like the um, like maybe like an alternative '90s playlist or something like that. Just being nostalgic. And uh, I looked at like the thing for it, and it said something like over 600 million plays or something. Like it just <laughs> right. it's just. And I had no idea what this, like, it just sounded, and I heard it, I thought to myself, oh, it's good for them. Like, you know, good for them that they're, like, back into it or something, you know? <laughs> right. like, because cause I had heard Smash or whatever, like, in 1994 or whatever, so, or, like, 95, whenever it kind of took off huge. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, oh, like, they they might have had, like, a break for, like, 20 years or something. And then, you know, they came back, they've got this song out now, and it's a huge hit and uh stuff so and then yeah i mean as as uh you know it did come out in 2008 so that that was sort of like (laughs) a little bit of like okay so in my mind i was like half right i was like okay well you know it did come out later than the 90s and then i didn't know i mean i even just looking you know just preparing for this a bit like i looked up like where they, you know, they, they were actually, like, huge in the mid-2000s, I guess, and stuff but still. Like, I'm not sure. But, like, uh, I didn't know none, none of that period. Like, none of that period of punk I know about at all. Like, all the different, like, uh, like Fallout Boy was too late for me. Right. Stuff like well, okay, that, so. that's, you know, the, okay, the song title does seem like a Fallout Boy song title. And I, and I agree, like, well, actually... Uh, is it are you is it okay to reveal age uh is that a secret yeah. or how old are you <laughs> no 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 i'm 41 you're 41 so. okay yeah so you you yeah you, there's no one would reasonably expect you to know about uh mid 2000s punk however i don't think that you're going to go far kid by the offspring is connected to any kind of punk uh legacy or anything that, it's not connected to any kind of happening or scene and that's why i think also you're correct to feel mandela affected by this whole thing because (laughs) i don't understand who likes the offspring or why i don't understand how it still exists or uh you know you said this song has 600 million like that's just fucking crazy something like that yeah Yeah, like i who i i I don't know who this is for and it's one of those things where i it's one of those many things it's like when you learn about you know the most popular youtuber and you've never heard of him in his life and he has like a hundred billion dollars or whatever. This is one of those things where it's like, I am, I've always followed this kind of music as if I'm following sports and I have yeah. no clue who likes the offspring sure. post smash. Yeah. So I f- also feel like I'm going insane from this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something, <laughs> it was something like that. And I also, my other uh, angle on this, that was uh, strange is that like, um, I, so I sort of thought that it was like, a really, really brutal song, sort of like in the same similar vein as like Smash. And so it was a Smash. So like the songs off that are like come out and play and stuff. It's like, it's sort of, it sounds like sort of like street cred sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> right. sort of like, it's like we're in, we're in some sort of South California gang or something. And we're like, you know, <laughs> negotiating with like the riots and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah. So and then, and then this, I thought when I heard it, I thought it was about, uh, someone being initiated into a gang where they're being told that they have to go kill someone or something. Right. So they would like have to walk up to them, shoot them in between the eyes and then walk away. And that was sort of like they're being brought into the gang 
And uh, so, and then I looked it up uh, today. I was like, well, what does it actually mean? And uh, I guess it's about like kids lying to each other and stuff like that. Like, it's like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So, and there's like a Lord of the Flies element to it sure. as well. Yeah. I thought, yeah. <laughs> I thought the Lord of the Flies thing was like a troll. Like, I thought that, I thought maybe some guy was like, putting uh jokes in to the song meanings and stuff to be like thing. and then i saw like the actual lyrics and stuff i'm like oh okay well so yeah i thought i i was like man these guys are like you know the bob dylan of punk or something you know like they're 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 doing like hurricane like songs or something about gang initiations well the thing <laughs> I, we've gotten under the hood of many offspring songs and most of them are like dexter holland read an article it's like as oh. basically half of the offspring songs i I wouldn't be surprised if they had a song about, for example, Dexter Holland read an article about the knockout game and decided to write a song about it. Like, it's a sure. lot of, like, hearsay, <laughs> yeah, fear yeah. I feel like he's never left his house, <laughs> sure. which is relatable, yeah. too. But. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the other thing is that, yeah, I thought that he was, like, somehow, like, was a gang member in the 90s or something, and, like, he's, like, reflecting on, like, his life and stuff. And I thought, like, you know... 2008's a bit late to be like I was in a gang once kind of thing or something. <laughs> yeah. So, and then uh, to find out it's about like you know don't tattle or something. I don't know. Like it just, I mean, it's a bit disappointing. I don't know if you know too much about him, but first of all, this is something we can't get get enough of. Is he's a rock star, but his his real name is Brian, which I think is okay. a really funny name sure. for a rock star. He's also sure. yeah yeah. He's got a PhD in molecular molecular biology. Uh, and okay. he has a pilot's license. He has his own private jet called Anarchy Air. And he also <laughs> okay. has his own hot yeah. sauce called Gringo yeah. Bandito. So he's kind of, sure. <laughs> I don't think he's been in a gang before is what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's kind of been yeah. having a midlife crisis since he was like 18, I think. Um, yeah, An Anarchy Air sounds like it would be like something you read about about the, what the CIA did in the 1980s <laughs> that were like 400 people died or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't so know. But I guess, instead, it's just yeah. So you were so this song was following you everywhere, and I think it really was uh, you know God plant, planting the seed <laughs> for you to come on the show finally. <laughs> sure. But um, y you know, uh, did, I guess the the final question is just all this context aside. Did you like the song or did you dislike it? Or how did you feel about the song kind of on an emotional level? Like it, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's just, uh, it seems pretty like I thought it was originally, you know, like maybe one of their nineties ones, maybe like, I mean, I thought, I thought it was like a new one, but when I saw it had that many hits and stuff, I thought maybe it was like, you know, for a bit, I thought maybe it was like sort of in the vein of their older ones that, that come out and play and self-esteem and stuff where it's like, you know, that sort of, I don't know. I like the vibe of like that, like storytelling song. Right. Uh, that is like punk and stuff is, uh, it's fun. And it's, I think it's a pretty good pop song, like in terms of it's just, you know, it's like fun, kind of like, uh, um, upbeat kind of thing or something. But like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I I, I I like it, but yeah. Your version of it where it's about a gang initiation is much better than just sure. kind of like yeah. junior <laughs> high English studies class uh, shit that it is. <laughs> well, Don, thank you so much for uh, sharing a little bit of yourself with us. Now, if Twitter disappears, where are people going to get their fix of Get Fiscal? And, and in general, you know, where can people find you? Um, so I do like a laid back sort of podcast with, uh, my friend Tom called, uh, you can't win, um, which is that you can't win pod on Twitter and, uh, you can, you know, I mean, just Google around and whatnot. Um, and then, uh, other than that, I mean, I'm going to try to be writing more and stuff. So I, I have a website, donaldhughes.ca and stuff. So that, that tracks sort of my articles and whatnot and stuff. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think they're going to. You know, I, we'll see what happens with Twitter, but yeah, so yeah, we'll see. All right, great, thank you so much. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. What did he go?